Columbia, South Carolina. Well, thank you very much, Mike, and those who just watched Duke escape well. <laughs> over Davidson from Charlotte, North Carolina. We welcome you to Columbia, South Carolina, where we're here at Pioneer Bowl 10. Tuskegee University just completed their first drive, and they punted the ball away. And now Virginia Union in the white uniforms will get the ball first down and 10 at their own four yard line their first offensive possession of the afternoon and we have a penalty already and you're talking about Lisa a pretty good punt by him 46 yards. We can have some movement there Charlie. Looks like Maurice Tolliver. Big 66. So the offensive alignment they're talking about penalties for Virginia Union this year Charles along with Charles Arbuckle. I'm Charlie Neal. And we welcome you to this uh, Pioneer Bowl, a gorgeous day here in Columbia, South Carolina. And there's the quarterback, the offensive player of the year in the CIAA, the Southpaw out of Candor, North Carolina. He's the quarterback for the Panthers of Virginia Union. He lets it go on first down and 10, has a complete on the far sideline. And it's Terrence Cunningham, the junior out of Pageland, South Carolina, who comes up with the reception and takes it across the 10 to the 11. As you look at the running backs in Marquise Davis and Elio, Elio Smith, the wide receivers, Philip Taylor, Michael Hampton, and Steve and Miller. And up front blocking, David Mims. He's a big kid at six foot eight, along with Matthew Silver, Chauncey Perry, LeKenton Blair, and Kenneth Moses. Actually, Kenneth Moses is not here today. His place is being taken by LaQuentin Blair, and they put Truman Watson in that right guard spot. Uh, Kenneth Moses uh, had to go to New Hampshire to take care of some personal business. Yeah, and that, that was the one thing they were concerned about. We talked about it in the open, that you had so many guys for this team that have been moved around. Tremaine Watson has to play here. Maurice Tolliver, who's usually a backup, has to play there. You know, Matthew Silva had some, you know, they had a lot of nicks and bruises over those three weeks. So it'll bring up the second down after the penalty marker. And this is against uh, Tuskegee. And it'll bring up a first down for Virginia Union as we look at the defense of Tuskegee. Jav uh, Jarvis Devon, the coach said he wished he had 11 Jarvis Devons on his team. Actually, he wanted 12. He said, <laughs> yeah. I want him, and then I want 11 more. <laughs> Kelvin Robbins is one of the linebackers here. You look at the secondary, Terrence Stringer, a fine specimen of a defensive back at six foot three. First down and 10. Going to the air once again. Wide open in the middle of the field is Michael Hampton. Hampton still on his feet. He's going to go all the way. Make it 84 yards on the pass play. Well, Charlie, I don't know what Gene Williams was doing. Number six, he stopped for Tuskegee and allowed Michael Hampton to keep going. They were in a cover two situation, and it was a great throw by Lamar Little. Now, Little did a very good job of setting up and just getting back in the pocket. Those big guys up front protected for him. The lefty gets the ball off right before he's hit. But you can see right down the middle of the field, he gave a little move to Gene Williams, and he stopped. Great run after the catch. Michael Hampton. And on for the point after is Hernandez. And... Virginia Union is on the board seven to nothing early in this contest and I'll tell you with 11 minutes and 30 seconds to go first quarter and that's not the longest pass play of the year for Virginia Union that one covered 84 we'll be back in a moment. Hey, you're looking at Michael Hampton who just put Virginia Union on the board with an 84-yard touchdown reception. He had a 97-yarder earlier this year against Central State University. Tuskegee on the return. This time it's Antoine Mitchell. And Mitchell is dumped at the 25-yard line. Let's throw it to the ESPNU studio for an in-game report. Lowell Galindo, how you doing? Pretty interesting. What do you think about that? Well, I think it's very interesting. <laughs> you know, one report you hear he's staying, and then the next. He's going? Yeah. You, you. So, therefore, 
to see who's, who's up for the Michigan job now. We hadn't heard anybody else's name. And we'll find out next week for sure if he's going to step. <laughs> Steven Freeman in the backfield now. And Freeman gets the hand as a fake, and it's an option play. And the quarterback, Atkinson, is across the 40 and out to the 42-yard line. 17-yard gain on the play before he stopped by Lamar Little. Well, you got to have that offensive line blocking for you, but the play fake holds the linebacker. You can see right there in the middle. It just holds people down. It doesn't let them go. Stevie Johnson, 54, got held just enough, and that allowed Jakari Atkinson to hit that hole. Now, if you have other guys blocked up, that makes it nice and easy for him to make those long runs. So it's first down and 10 after the 17-yard run by Jakari Atkinson. And he's a pretty good option quarterback. Got a chance to see more film after in that uh, game against uh, Alabama State. He has this one complete to Lorenzo Crawford. And Crawford has another first down across midfield into Virginia Union territory. And the ball is spotted at the 43-yard line. D.J. Spellman there to make the stop. Well, and also, too, Charlie, it doesn't hurt having Damian Craig. The former University of Auburn quarterback, Auburn University quarterback, who's the quarterback's coach here. And that's the one thing I talked to him before the game. I actually played a little catch with him. But he was just talking mainly about Jakari Atkinson and how good he is and how smart he is also. And remember, last year he was playing behind Kevin Huff, who's the receivers coach here, who was almost everything as far as the SIC, who's on the sideline now with a ruptured Achilles. <laughs> Atkinson lets it go off the hands of Crawford. He just couldn't bring this one down. Had a lot of mustard on that one, didn't he? Well, Charlie, I was going to tell you that. He should probably take it a little bit off. He winds up sometimes when you watch him on film. You know, he wants to really fire that ball in there, but he slipped. And I think that's the one thing that threw him off. See, a quarterback has an internal clock. He says, okay, if I slip here and my guy's in the middle, I have to put a little bit more on it. Really, he didn't that time, but he just kind of panicked a little bit and got that ball out. It was hot. Yeah, Jakari. Was it hot mustard or regular? Yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> Great coupon. Atkinson, the SIC Offensive Player of the Year in the SIC and the Most Valuable Player. And he has the ball on the option. Pitches it this side, this time to Freeman, and Freeman picks it up and makes something out of nothing which could have been a disaster. He gets it down inside the 40 to about the 38-yard line before Addison Arrington was there to make the stop, but it's going to bring up a third down situation for the Golden Tigers of Tuskegee, who this year will 44% on third down conversions coming into today's ball game. You know, Charlie, the other thing we should talk about, too, the turf here is a nice brand-new field turf but they haven't worked it as well. We talked to the head coach for Benedict, and he was saying we're going to do a lot better job of watering it, rolling it. You may see some people slip because a lot of that sand and, and uh, ground-up rubber is coming back up to the surface. On third down, Atkinson flushed out of the pocket, tackled from behind. Good play defensively by Brandon Smith. Half sack, have Brandon Smith around. Mm -hmm. That's his 12th on the year. Great player with speed. And watch how fast he is off the corner. When you look at this break, he comes on the blitz. No one picks him up. Fits you, gets there, and watch number five. Look at that. Great play of getting after and staying. One five to another. I got you, my man. Brandon Smith is a great story in itself. Here's a young man that it started to go to another school wound up here at Virginia Union. And we'll talk more about Brandon Smith as the game goes on. This punt is taken at the 10-yard line. Virginia Union trying to get something going this time and bringing it back for the Panthers is Patrick Cunningham. And we'll be back here in a moment. Side. 7-0 our score. Virginia Union with the ball for the second time today. Little two for two in the passing department. 93 yards. That's pretty good stats. Isn't it? <laughs> that's that's a, a way that's to start the game. <laughs> <laughs> First handoff of the ball game, and they keep it on the ground, and they run straight ahead. Elihu Smith, we get a chance to see him for the first time, a senior out of Glassboro, New Jersey. First team all CIAA. Led the conference in rushing by 164 yards over the closest competitor well he's been a very productive back over the last four years at this program done a very good job and you know this year has been a breakout year for him but I think a lot of it too is set up by the junior Lamar Little this class of guys talking to Arrington Jones has really been key for this offense as well as defense Cunningham in the lineup today 
basically because Patrick Mills is not here and there's a little confusion and Virginia Union trying to get their self set up had to call a timeout. Here's a team that finished the season 10 and 2, 6 and 1. And in the preseason polls, Virginia Union, as you look at Arrington Jones, their head coach, Arrington Jones, the third in his fourth year, they were uh, picked to finish third in the preseason poll. Well, he said, uh, you know, talking to him yesterday and today, they had five plays in there two losses that really made the difference he said they fumbled a lot in the uh, you know elizabeth city game they had six turnovers that game yeah, yeah and then he said the other loss was the same thing he said if we had just taken care of those two you know five plays made the big difference for us and he felt like if we don't beat ourselves charles that's half the battle for us they started the season six and oh before that loss that you spoke about to elizabeth city their other loss came in the CIAA championship game to Shaw University, and that was in double overtime that they lost that one. Both teams playing overtime games their last outing. It was a triple overtime win by Tuskegee of Alabama State on Thanksgiving Day and a double overtime loss by Union. And this one is incomplete, and they intended that for Michael Hampton, who has a touchdown already. In the ball game, Terrence Stringer was the man covering in number 12, the senior out of Smith's, Alabama. Electrical engineering majors. You look there at Lamar Little, a Southpaw. I was kidding him yesterday at practice. I said, they list you as 5'10. I'm 5'11, and you're shorter than I am. You know what I told him? I said, tell him you're tall enough. <laughs> <laughs> or they list him as 5'11. Yeah, number one in passing efficiency in the conference, total offense, and in passing. As you look at third down conversions, 39% for Virginia Union for the season. It's a third and seven facing them now. Here's a pass inside. And once again, off to the races. Here we go. It's Michael Hampton once again at the five. They're going to bring him down at the one. Touchdown. They're going to call touchdown. Well, that time, Gene Williams came and walked him down. But I'll tell you, it was a great block by David Mims, number 70, the, the big left tackle out of Charlotte, North Carolina, with a huge block to spring that play. You're going to see him come out. Watch Big 70 at the bottom of your screen set up. Big 70 coming at 6, 8, 3, 30, and he gets a booming block right there. And that's what you need to have to spring those long places. Terrence Stringer was the guy that got hit, and that's now Hamp makes Hampton off to the races. Two huge plays and two catches. Not bad at all. That was a third and seven play, and they converted. They go 72 yards. Three plays. No, big and, David, what I'll tell you, two catches, not a bad afternoon for that young man. <laughs> big David Mims, father played basketball at Morris Brown. The interesting thing, did he get in? Now, we don't have replay to overturn this or talk through it, but that was a great rundown and hustle play. Well, I think he's down at the one-yard line. The knee is down yeah. before the ball cross. But one official was going, I think the official going down the sideline was going to spot it at the one, but the back judge was standing at the goal line. He signaled touchdown. Yeah, and there's no replay to go through it. But, you know, that's a tough play, too, because you have, if they didn't consult with one another, it's hard to say, you know, who got it, but he was clearly down. But if you're Willie Slater, though, even if you would have been at the one-yard line, the way this offense for Virginia Union is playing, you've got to ask yourself, what are we doing as a defense and that guy Michael Hampton okay he didn't cover him Let's see right here. here here's the the catch from behind yeah, by his Frank knee is Williams. down on about the one, one and a half yard, yard yeah. line Frank Williams was there to bring him down but hey they'll take it it's 14 nothing Virginia Union and somebody would have said who would have thunk it <laughs> <laughs> well if you look at Tuskegee they really don't give up a lot of points the yeah. highest output this year was last week in the Turkey Bowl. Right. Uh, They've when, only given up about 12 points a game, so everybody's he already surpassed that. Yeah. Here's yeah. Michael Hampton out of Charlotte. Career 62 catches now and 10 touchdowns. Out of Olympic High School. He had a 99-yard reception that set a school record and had a 97-yard earlier today, and he has two long ones this afternoon. One on the kind of a screen pass, and here feeling it for Tuskegee University is Mitchell, and Mitchell brings it back out to about the 32-yard line. Let's see what the penalty mark is all about. 
Our referee today is Mike Brown, CIAA crew of officials. Well, apparently there's no flag. <laughs> Let's go to the studio, Lowell Galindo. Lowell. Dr. Pepper ACC Championship, Boston College with the touchdown, but on the extra point, Dwayne Taylor with the block, and Brandon Flowers going the other way. Beamer ball at its best as Virginia Tech gets the two points, but Boston College leading this one. And fits you on the carry. Thank you, Lowell. And he finds the going very rough, maybe a couple of yards, and that's it. Charlie, what I see right away is Virginia Union is playing more like the team that is undefeated. You look at Tuskegee, did they have a lot taken out of them last week with that long game? And then Virginia Union, even though they've had the injuries with the layoff, they had a chance to watch a lot more film this week, and maybe that's starting to help them with this initial wave that they put on Tuskegee. Well, we'll see what happens here. You know, Tuskegee finding themselves in unfamiliar territory right now. Atkinson with plenty of time, but nobody to throw to. Finally to Fitzhugh, and Fitzhugh dives forward after making the catch. It's still going to bring up a third down. Let's talk about yesterday also with the walkthroughs. Virginia Union was here. They got here on time, but the, the gates were closed. They couldn't get in. And then Tuskegee came in a little bit earlier than expected and kind of hung around. So, you know, that kind of stuff goes on all the time. And when it does, those coaches don't, don't they forget. don't say much about it, but they remember it. They remember it. So on third down and five, that's what's facing Tuskegee right now. The lone setback with Atkinson is Fitzhugh. Don Bailey's in the lineup, top of your screen, going back to the near side, and it's complete on the near side to Lisa, the tight end, or the receiver, make that, uh, make that 85, Antoine Mitchell, rather, on the reception, and, re and it's going to bring up a fourth down. It's going to be short because Stevie Rod Johnson was there to make sure he didn't get away. He tried to spin out of the arms of Stevie Johnson, but... Stevie Deuce was holding on the linebacker out of Spotsylvania, Virginia. Well, and it's interesting to see these offensive linemen for Tuskegee walking off the field and not playing with the, the same rhythm and, and, and tempo that I'm accustomed to watching this team play. Virginia Union is just taking it to them. Now they were having to wait for a guy to get on the punt team. He's coming out late. Number 45, Jason Stanley. So that's a sign to me that guys' heads aren't in the game. He's a, he's a snapper. Yeah, Marcus Davis. That's number 45 that just came on. Low snap. Nobody there. Blocked. And it is blocked. Blocked by number 42 for Virginia Union, and that is Addison Arrington who came up with the block. Well, the snapper was 45, Jason Stanley, and he was low on no, the... No, correction. I'm, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Jason Stanley... And it, just, it wasn't a good snap. And, and that part of what I just said, being late to get out there, when you kind of get up foggy and look, the bad snap coming to the, the kicker, and Lacer tries to get it off. Good block there. Well, he was uh, not, didn't look like Lacer did a great job of fielding that yeah. ball either. Adidas Arrington laid out and did a good job of taking it off his foot because they were a little slow getting there like you said and then when they finally Arrington, he said well, i got a chance to block this let me get let me put it in another gear here so third possession of the afternoon for the panthers of virginia union and here's little going to the air and this is going to be incomplete and what's the name wants a flag michael hampton michael hampton wants a flag he thought he was being Punished by Justin Hanna, who was covering him down there in the end zone. I don't think either guy could see the ball, and that's the one thing we talked about. In that area of the secondary, in the backfield, it's hard to see the football because you're looking right into the sun. Beautiful day here in Columbia, South Carolina. No clouds, and later in the game, it's going to get worse. But when you throw that ball up in the air, it's tough to see it. Cedric Ivory also down there covering second down and 10. That may be the first incomplete pass that Little has thrown today. He's going back to the air again off the shotgun. Wide open and off the hands of Stephen Miller. He had it. 
wide open, and he might have gone into the end zone. There he is, number seven, the junior out of San Diego, California. And for up to the minute news on everything that is college sports, log on to ESPNU.com. And if you don't have ESPNU, be sure to log on to ESPNU.com, type in your zip code at the top of the page, or call your local cable operator or satellite provider. Log on to ESPNU.com today because we are college sports. You know, Helix High School is where Reggie Bush went to school, and I think also Carl Burrell was an alumni from Helix. Member served me Helix correctly. Charter School. Penalty marker down. The ball is caught right at the three-yard line by Michael Hampton. Three catches today, almost into the end zone. Mike, Michael Hampton. <laughs> Let's see what the penalty marker is about. That was a third and ten play, and it's going to be against Tuskegee. So the play will stand up. It'll be first and goal offsides against the Tigers of Tuskegee. First and goal at the three for Virginia Union. And Michael Hampton with his third reception today. Well, and Lamar Little does a very good job of improvising. And look where he throws the football, only where Hampton can catch it. Hampton with both feet in bounds. That's a good throw and catch. And they were working on this yesterday, Charlie, when we were at the walkthrough. These kind of plays were the ones that Lamar Little and Michael Hampton were saying, let's get in the rhythm of it. Nice throw and catch there. Empty backfield now. Checking into the backfield is Dwayne Griffin, number 27. Well, first and goal, Griffin has the ball, goes in the air. He's upended there. He will not get in, I believe. The man who upended him was Javaris Devon. Jarvis Devon. Well, you talk about leaving your feet, and if you do too soon, you'll have 49 come under you and 51 Henry Turner. Both of those line, one defensive end, one linebacker. And I think that's what they, they're going to tell them on the sideline. If you keep your feet and you run through, Clifton Davis is a running back coach, run through. Don't dive over the top because there was a hole there. Second down, Elihu Smith is back in the lineup this time. Mr. Reliable, let's see if he gets the handoff this time. Fumble! The ball is on the ground, and Lamar Little was able to fall on it. You know, Charlie, they've really opened this passing game open today. Normally, they average about 225 yards running the football, Virginia Union. They come in today with the 140, 173 passing yard per game. They're going to pass that up really quickly. They've already surpassed it on two, basically on, on the first two touchdowns. And then that long pass to Michael Hampton on the sideline. So it is third and goal. Red zone offense. They were first in the conference in the CIAA in red zone offense this season. Virginia Union. Here it is. The handoff to Smith. He is not going to get there. The hit put on him as he got to the hole by Devon. And he also had some hope down there this is a from real, Jonathan Hall. Real good play, a good strong play. He takes on a block or just comes in slashing, excuse me. Jonathan Harris on the outside forcing it back in, but Jarvis Devon, quiet assassin. He really did come after and lay a good hit there and stop the touchdown. 21 yard field goal for Hernandez, who is five of eight. He only attempted eight all season long, as long as 39. This is well within his range. High snap, the kick is up through the uprights, and we have a 17 to nothing ball game. Good special teams played by Virginia Union. A couple of long passes. That'll give you an edge. You've heard the legendary test. Here at Charlie W. Johnson Stadium, Pioneer Bowl 10, Virginia Union is jumped all over Tuskegee. They lead it 17 to nothing, and we're still in the first quarter. This will be Mario Jackson on the return from the 12-yard line. They moved him over to the other side because they've been kicking away from him, so they switched positions with him and Antoine Mitchell on that kick. Don't forget college basketball doubleheader. 
And it continues right here on Sunday afternoon. First to two Eastern Arizona State. The Sun Devils face to the Cornhuskers of Nebraska. Then at four Eastern, the Cardinal of Stanford take on the Buffaloes of Colorado. The Big 12 Pac-10 Hardwood Series is all part of Jimmy V Week right here on ESPNU on Sunday. For more information, log on to ESPNU.com. I can't get enough of that speech every time it comes on, Charlie. Oh, I'm, isn't I'm, it something? I'm, I'm drawn to it. I got to watch it. I've got a copy of it. <laughs> yeah, every time it comes on TV, I got to watch it. Atkinson throws out the flat, has it complete, but what a defensive play down there by number 19 for DJ Virginia Spellman. Union, DJ Spellman, because he was knocked down, got up, and still at the strong safety made the tackle. Well, and that's the one thing that Virginia Union is doing a very good job of that Tuskegee is not. They're tackling well. And then they're playing good assignment football, fitting in the gaps. Wherever those guys are running, they're finishing and filling the lanes. DJ e. Spellman from London, England. Converted wide receiver, psychology major, junior. Here's Atkinson from the shotgun. Under pressure. Coming out of there and brought down from behind. And the stop made by Reginald Smalls. No, Charlie Wood. The, the Virginia Union defense is doing their secondary. They're playing very good coverage. Now, if they're playing man or zone, they're sticking with those guys very well and not allowing Jakari Atkinson a chance to find his receivers. When you look at Reginald Smalls there, they call him the team's politician. He's the history major out of Lithonia, Georgia, went to Martin Luther King High. And we got movement, all kinds of movement here. And that was a third down. I think Tuskegee was going to try to quick snap yeah. to catch they were Virginia to get Union off. moving. And they're going to get a false start. So rather than third and one, it's going to be third and six. Sometimes you, you outthink yourself. Yeah. You outsmart yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, <laughs> and they had a chance because there was, they had them outflanked in the boundary. Down where they were, there was no one there. So third down and six now for the Golden Tigers of Tuskegee. The ball back at the 36-yard line, right outside the 35. Again, Atkinson working from the shotgun. High snap, here's a blitz. And he's in trouble, tries to step outside, has it complete. In the middle of the field, Sean Bailey has it. And let's see, he has enough for the first down, he should. You know, very good job by Atkinson of staying alive and then stepping up into the pocket. Yeah, he was pressured there. Yeah, he was. It came with the blitz off the edge. But I think what I like about Atkinson, he kept his eyes up, didn't panic, and was able to get the ball down the field. Elshon Bailey on the reception. The junior out of Norland High in Miami gives him a first down. His 12th reception of the year. And it moves the ball and the chains out to the 40 seven yard line where to be first down and 10 and Tuskegee moving the ball one of the few first downs they've been able to attain so yeah. far today I tell you Virginia Union is being more physical than Tuskegee which is surprising me early on I really thought it would be a, a match at the same level but right now Virginia Union is doing a very good job of not allowing Tuskegee who averages 45.8 points a game to really get in the offensive rhythm well, you know, when you look at the stats and you look at Tuskegee coming into today's ball game, when they average yards per game rushing, they were averaging 243, 256 passing. They had 35 touchdowns rushing, 33 touchdowns passing. You're talking about balance, and that's what all coaches always talk yeah. about is balance, and that's as balanced as you're going to get. Yeah, and the other thing you got to look at, too, is, you know, what are they doing offensively on third down today and that's where they've really struck yeah, a team that was 44 percent of third down conversions well yeah, there's some seeming is some confusion on part of the officiating crew for whatever reason they're just blowing you know sometimes you just got to blow your whistle <laughs> Well, I was waiting for you to bring that one up. Because <laughs> I didn't know why they were blowing the whistle. <laughs> Here's Atkinson taking off the left side. Brought down on the far sideline. I'll tell you, coming up again, Brandon Smith. And we talked about him earlier. And, and what a story that young man is. And we're going to try to tell his story 
before this day is over. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what he does a good job of is he flows through the hole, he fills, and then he finishes. And you talk about three Fs. If you're, you don't usually want to get an F grade, but right. in football, it's okay. Well, he didn't play football until his senior year of high school, worked in his dad's lawn care business. He decided to play football and got in Balled on an on-field fight in high school. He was removed from the team because of the incident. The team went on to go 14-0 that year, and he didn't get a ring. <laughs> so, you know, that was the first thing that he did wrong. Fit two picks up the first down across the, or inside the 43-yard line to about the 41-yard line. But that's going to be the end of the first quarter. We'll get the chance to talk more about Brandon Smith and this Tuskegee team. They're trying to get something going in a moment. ESPNU Coaches Spotlight, Tuesdays at 1, only on ESPNU. The Division II student athlete experience emphasizes academic and athletic excellence. From Olympic style sports festival championships to community focused partnerships, Division II schools are moving forward with a new attitude learning, service, passion, sportsmanship, resourcefulness, and balance. These are the attributes of student athletes, coaches, administrators, and alumni and fans who say with pride, I chose Division II. Hi, it's Vince with Sham Wow. You'll be saying wow every time you use this towel. It's like a chamois, it's like a towel, it's like a sponge. A regular towel doesn't work wet. This works wet or dry. This is for the house, the car, the boat. The RV. Sham Wow holds 20 times its weight in liquid. Look at this. It just does the work. Why do you want to work twice as hard? Doesn't trip. Doesn't make a mess. Ring it out. You wash it in the washing machine. Made in Germany. You know the Germans always make good stuff. You can cut it in half. Use one as a bath mat. Drain your dishes with the other one. Use one as a towel. Olympic divers, they use it as a towel. Look at that. Completely dry. Put a wet sweater. Roll it up. It dries your sweaters. Here's some cola. Wine, coffee, cola, pet stains. Not only is the damage going to be on top. There's your mildew. That is going to smell. See that? The most of We're going to do this in real time. Look at this. Put on the spill. Turn it over. Without even putting any pressure, 50% of the cola right there. You follow me, camera guy? The other 50%, the color starts to come up. No other towel is going to do that. It acts like a vacuum. And look at this. Virtually dry on the bottom. See what I'm telling you? Sham wow, you'll be saying wow every time. I can't live without it. I just love it. Oh my gosh, I don't even buy paper towels anymore. If you're gonna wash your cars or any kind of vehicle, you'd be out of your mind not to own one of these. All I can say is sham wow. You're gonna spend $20 every month on paper towels anyway. You're throwing your... 17 to nothing our score as we start the second quarter. Atkinson going upstairs and it's caught in back by Inglis. Boy, we saw him make some spectacular catches against Alabama State on Thanksgiving Day, and what a catch he just made there. That was an outstanding catch, and he was able to use his body. It was almost like basketball. If you're a good basketball player, you can be a good football player. You tell kids that all the time. If you play multi-sports, this is what you do. Good throw by Atkinson of just getting it out there, and he, you don't see the body position between him and Levon Hyatt, but it's there. And a great catch, body control, bringing that ball in. So at the four-yard line, it's first down and goal line. for Tuskegee. Second back through is Freeman, and Freeman is stacked up. Hey, second time, Charlie, today that a guy jumps when he doesn't need to. I mean, everybody thinks they can be Reggie Bush now and dive in from the five. It doesn't always work. Stay on your feet, drive through those guys, and you may get in for six. Now, if you're on the one-yard line, you can go over the top. Here's red zone for Tuskegee this year. Oh, now 43 out of 53. Line. From the eye formation, Freeman the second back. Atkinson on the option, pitches to Freeman. Cuts it back, and he's going to be stopped before he can get to the goal line. And again, Brandon Smith is there defensively. The ball is a magnet to number five. It is. <laughs> Brandon Smith is just, he's magnetized by the football and the carrier. Good job by Jakari Atkinson of getting the ball off, let alone but this is a great play. And you see how number five is a flash in your screen? Whenever there's a ball carrier, he's going to show up with mean intentions. And we're talking about the fact that he missed out on his high school championship team. He wound up at Fork Union Military Academy. Then finally got a chance to get a scholarship to Rhode Island. Things didn't work out for him there. He was going to go back and work for his dad full time and then decided to, to go to play at Virginia Union. And they're happy to see him as Fitzhugh crosses the goal line. 
Touchdown. You know, Charlie, the, the interesting thing, Coach Slater talked about people, Driver, and Jones, those offensive line, Larry Peoples, Anthony Driver, and Kevin Jones not being good practice players. It looked like that first quarter they were basically in practice. Now right. they're in the game. Right. They're playing. Because those big guys up front now are coming off the line, and they usually make the biggest difference in how you run or throw the football. So Fitzhugh puts Tuskegee on the board. They're going Number for the 13. point after with Matt Sims trying to kick the extra point. 59 of 65 in that department this season. And a bad snap, but somehow he got it down and it went through. And again, 17 to 7, and we'll go to the studio. Lowell with an update. Lowell. And somebody's sitting up in the booth with us. Glad that Tuskegee got on the board as the commissioner of the SIC, Dr. Bill Lyon. Always good to see you, Doctor. Thank you. And it's good to see you here in Columbia, South Carolina. Great day, great facility to have this, and you've got to be proud of this stadium, part of uh, one of the schools in the SIC. Absolutely. Uh, Benedict College is one of our up-and-coming institutions as far as its sports programs, but also we're able to host something so fine in such a wonderful facility. It's just gratifying to us because it also benefits the CIAA because of the Pioneer Bowl as, as one of the many functions that they hold. So we're proud of this uh, the stadium and also of, the, of our people here. Well, you know, a lot of people might say, well, in years to come, if Benedict is the, is the uh, home school or the and they're playing it here because you're going to be here for the next three years. Right. They're going to get an advantage. Well, I know you've played it in five different locations. This is the fifth different location. You've had it twice in Atlanta, right. once at the Dome, one of, once on Morris Brown's campus. Then you had it in Mobile, Alabama at the uh, Lad People Stadium, and you also had it in uh, Charlotte. Charlotte, North Carolina. So this is the fifth venue you've gone to. Right, and we really have been tra just trying to find the right venue. Hurricane Katrina caused us to leave Mobile, and, uh, of course, we've been trying to find the right venue. You, and I think we found it. Uh, the city of Columbia uh, in Richland County has been just marvelous in helping us in this short period of time. So we're really excited about it because Columbia is a wonderful uh, v venue. It has a great city and a nice, wonderful history. So, And this stadium is just right for the size of, uh, of, of, of our audience, which is anywhere from 15 to 20,000 that we're looking for. Well, Charlie, not a very good play there. You have your team taken off, and at that point, you should stay in the end zone. Oh, especially with the ball kicked that way, and then you get a penalty on top of it. Well, that's what happens because you, your guys are anticipating. They're going to pause, and they're not going to go through, and they're going to take their time. And that's what hurts them. Now, Dr. Lott, I have the question. That if you look at, you know, from this standpoint and that perspective, you know, you say Tuskegee. If they were in the Division II championships, how well they would play. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on that? Because the Pioneer Bowl is very important, but I think you also look at it with this year, them being so strong and them having that opportunity. I know you guys have to evaluate that as a conference. Absolutely. Uh, we also know that, that Tuskegee has to evaluate that as a part of their program with the option of whether they want to participate in the NCAA playoffs. And, of course, the Turkey Day Classic for them is very important. The conference has elected to allow them that opportunity, okay. and we respect that, and I, as commissioner, uh, we certainly do miss an opportunity for them to showcase uh, perhaps one of the top teams in the United States right now in all of Division II or 1AA. Uh, but, uh, of course, that's the way it is. But we are fortunate enough to have them in the Pioneer Bowl and to have a Pioneer Bowl for them to go to. Yeah. All right, Dr. Bill Lyde, always great seeing you, and thank you so much for the hospitality, and what a great weekend it's been here. I mean, a lot of things have been the, the you had Steve Spurrier speak at the, yes. the tip-off banquet the other night, and he was great at the luncheon. Willie Jeffries was there that's yesterday. Right. Oh, I mean, yeah. you had an all-star cast, and <laughs> oh, you had we, Charles Warbuckle in town. That's oh, right. No, that's Charlie right. Neal. That's right. Right. The, the Charlie Neal. Both of you guys were in town, <laughs> but it's been wonderful. I want to thank ESPN and, all, and ESPNU, and, and we want to just thank y'all for the job you're doing and continuing to do with us. Well, thank you very much. As little goes back to pass, this one's almost intercepted on the far sideline. Good defense down there and broken up. I think that was Frank Williams or yeah. Gene Williams. Number, number six Good or job. number 19 there. Maybe Jonathan Harris. Let's see who got a hand on it over there. Yeah, I think Gene, Gene Williams, yeah. yeah. Williams, that's it. Well, you know, th this team had been pressured the first couple of drives. And think about it. Virginia Union started and had some long drives. 
Tuskegee now, their defense is stepping up, and Reginald Ruffin, the defensive coordinator, said, we're going to have to play with our lunch pails. These guys are tough, and it's going to be tough to stop them. Third down and nine now for Tuskegee. Or if I make that Virginia Union, rather. Play action. In trouble. The quarterback is chased down and brought down from behind. And coming up with the big stop, number Van, 42. Van McLeod. And that's McLeod. But you know what, Charlie? He really should have gotten tackled in the end zone. Lamar Very Little, close, wasn't it? Lamar Little's ability to break away. Watch here. Van McLeod had him. But he was able to, that clock went off in his head. He felt the pressure. And fortunately for him, he was able to get out of the end zone. First punt of the day for, uh, uh, should say, Virginia Union. Wayne Motley is back to do the honors. He gets it away. And he drives Bailey all the way back to near midfield. But he's going to have good field position for Tuskegee all the way down to the 25 yard line, about a 24 yard return. That kick return that shouldn't have come out is really starting to come back. And we'll be back. Tuskegee, famous for the Tuskegee Airmen, the first. African-American military airmen, first cadet class began in 1941. 13 originally started, five completed. From 1942 to 46, 994 pilots graduated of the Tuskegee Army Air Field. And we talk about Tuskegee, Lionel Richie, Tom Joyner, Ray Nagin, the mayor of uh, New Orleans, Keenan Ivory Wayman, Alan Coachman Davis, the first African-American women to win an Olympic gold medal in track winning it in 1948 in London in the high jump. Some great people coming out of Tuskegee. Here's the quarterback Atkinson going left. Inside the 10, still on his feet. Touchdown, Tuskegee. Tuskegee did a very good job, Charlie. I'll tell you why. At that time, Brandon Smith is going to come on the blitz. Now, this player is going to come back. But Brandon Smith comes on the blitz. He misses. And Jakari Atkinson is able to get outside. But it's all for not. Well, there's a penalty marker down. Those are the things that make coaches lose their hair. <laughs> yeah, it makes them go crazy. Our referee, Mike Brown. Jakari Atkinson, fine specimen of a quarterback at 6'3", 210 pounds. And You're going to see right on the end, the holding there, you see 69 Larry Peoples. And really didn't need to. That's the other thing about that play. Watch 69 here on the bottom left of your screen. He disengages and pulls Kenny White, Kenny White Jr. Mm -hmm. And really didn't need to because Atkinson was going to get around there. You saw the blitz I talked about earlier, number five, Brandon Smith coming inside. And you get out to the boundary, there's no one there. And Atkinson did a good job of taking that to the house. First and 20 now. Ball spotted all the way back to the 35. That would have been his seventh rushing touchdown this year. Now he's going upstairs looking for English. And they got all kinds of flags <laughs> in the end zone. I think, no question about it. Yeah. Niles Rainey beaten in the corner over there. And Niles... Now, let's see if they're going to call offensive or defensive pass interference. This is going to be very interesting. Both of the players, I thought, what do you think? Well, I, I think what happened, you, they both lost the ball in the air. And Jason English, then, when he doesn't see it, stops. And so you're taught as a receiver to slow down and body up, meaning you get close to the guy, and then if he runs through you, they're going to call pass interference. If he stays on you and you guys have to jump, then you can win that jump ball. And the NFL, that would be placed at the two-yard line or one yard line because it occurred in the end zone. Yep. But uh, in college, it would be a 15 yard penalty. The, the biggest problem in that corner of the end zone, Charlie, is that the sun is directly there. When you look up, you can't see it. And they're going to call defensive pass interference against Niles Rainey. Yeah, and Arrington Jones <laughs> is, is highly upset. That was one of those. So they're going to spot it at the 10 yard line or 15 yard line. Let's see where they're going to spot it. Here's a look at the penalty. You're going to see both of those guys looking up. And that's one of those things where that's what they call the hole. They both just body up to each other. But when well, that's Niles a 20 yard penalty. When Niles Rainey grabs him, 
I don't understand how's a 20 yard. They're, they're, they're looking to move it back five yards. Yeah, I was going to say because the ball was at the 35 yard line. How could it be a it'd be spotted at the 10 or 15? It should be spotted at the 20. I think the umpires got the ball in his hand. Okay. And it back. <laughs> I was going to say they all of a sudden it became a 20 yard penalty and it could only be 15. As long as I played football, I didn't know they had 20 yard penalties. Well, <laughs> Design, you know, unless it was spot of the ball call or something. The ball was at the 35 because of the 10 yard penalty for the hole. And so, therefore, on pass interference, the most they could get is 15 yards. Now they're moving it forward again. I don't understand this. The ball will be on the 10 I don't understand line. it. Now I'm. <laughs> Yes, it occurred in the end zone, but in college, now they're making it first and goal at the 10. Maybe maybe that's something I don't know. Maybe they spotted at the 10-yard line if it occurred in the end zone. <laughs> I'll ask Charlie Bartlett. He's here. He's the supervisor of officials for the CIAA. I'll get with him at halftime and find out. There's Atkinson giving to Fitzhugh. Fitzhugh is in the end zone for his second touchdown of the day. A 10-yard run for Richard Fitzhugh. He had four touchdowns during the regular season. He has two this afternoon. Good strong run by Fitzhugh, also that line. And once they got a chance to get in close, they really felt more comfortable of running that football and taking advantage of this Virginia Union defensive line. So after being down 17 to nothing, they're trying to make it a one possession ball game right now with the extra point forthcoming by Matt Sims. High snap. The kick is up. It does through. And it's a 17 to 14 ball game. They have rallied. And that was a 25 yard drive. Remember, we had a good punt return by Sean Bailey that put him in great field position plus a pass interference penalty. We'll be back. You've heard. What's up, huh? What's up, man? Hey, I got something coming for y'all. Stay tuned, bro. I got something for y'all. Back here at Charlie W. Johnson Stadium as you look at Richard Fitzhugh with the second touchdown of the afternoon. Virginia Union leading by a score of 17 to 14. Squib kick on the ground comes to one of the up backs at the 25-yard line, and that's as far as they're going to get up to about the 29-yard line. College basketball on ESPNU continues tonight. Three games at 5.30, the 3-4 and four Michigan Wolverines face the 3-4 and four Harvard Crimson, then at 7.30, the 4-2 and two Ohio State Buckeyes with that 7-foot freshman, Costa Kufus, takes on the number 16th-ranked Butler Braves, then at 9.30, number 15, Indiana Hoosiers, led by super freshman Eric Gordon, takes on number 22nd, Southern Illinois Salukis. Gordon's averaging 27 points a game. College basketball tonight presented by City, part of the Jimmy V weekend. I lived in Indianapolis for 12 years. I used to see that little kid play at the Jewish Community Center <laughs> back in the day. So I didn't realize he was going to be that good. And sacked. On the defensive side, Devon comes up with the sack of Lamar Little. Yeah, Jarvis Devon does a good job there of just getting off the edge. And that's the pressure that you have to put on Little. If Little gets a chance to get away, look at Devon with the great move. Get the hands off of me and get to him. See, a lot of people look at what the guy's doing with his feet and speed. But look at the hands. Look how he knocks the hands off and gets to the quarterback. That's the key. That's what you have to do. I did talk to Charlie Bartlett. He said it is a 15-yard penalty. The ball should have been at the 20, not at the 10. That's and he said he's on his way to the locker room now. <laughs> he may have another set of officials for the second half. <laughs> at the 39-yard line, the quarterback, Lamar Little, on the carry, brought down by Justin Hanna. You know, the other thing that Little brings to you, Charlie, is this ability. You know, you get him back there, you think you have him trapped. He's like one of those guys in a walk-in closet. You know, you can get him in there, but it's hard to tackle. He's got about five, in a five-by-five five space, he's going to make three or four people miss. From their own 39-yard line, it is a third and ten facing the Panthers of Virginia Union. Third down and ten, empty backfield for Little. Under pressure, Devon has him. Ball is loose. And 
it's going to be Tuskegee getting possession. Well, they talk about how quiet this guy is and how hard he works, but I'll tell you what, if you do not stop him on that first initial charge and make him redirect, Jarvis Devon is outstanding in what he can do in getting after the quarterback. First turnover of the ball game. This comes with 9.49 left in the first half. Watch at the bottom of your screen again. LaQuentin Blair has already been beaten. This time he opens up outside. You never let the guy go back inside if you're an offensive lineman. Because in the quarterback, that's the quickest way to him. But he got beat earlier with the hand movement on the outside. And Lamar Little never sees it. Now, usually your left tackle is the key guy. But for a lefty quarterback, your right tackle has to be the key man and the one that can stop the speed rush. Malcolm Crutchfield was the man who came up with the recovery of the fumble. Number 92, first down and 10, Tuskegee. Atkinson to the air. Man is there. It's incomplete. You know, Charlie, I think just in that area, and you're going to see it as the game goes on, it's hard to see the football. They have not yeah. had any completions to that side of the field you going into that end zone. Yeah, because of the sun, the yeah. way it's coming down into your eyes. That was Sean Bailey who had a big punt return earlier that led to that last touchdown drive by Tuskegee. He has a catch also today, junior out of Norland High in Miami. It is second down and 10 as they break the huddle. Bailey's in a slot to the far side of the field. Jason English is also there. Lone set back is Fitzhugh. And they give it over to Fitzhugh. Fitzhugh is down into the gut of the defense and down to about the 26-yard line, a gain of three. It'll be third down and seven. Yeah, we're, we're seeing a di big difference between the first quarter and the second quarter. It certainly you is. Know, Virginia Union and how quickly they started. And now we're seeing Tuskegee making some plays on defense, making plays on offense, really getting themselves back into this ball game. 13 different receivers coming into this ball game. Court passes for Tuskegee. Seven had at least 11 receptions. So they do spread the wealth around. We saw them trying to get it to Sean Bailey that time. Now Atkinson going up top once again under pressure. And he gets out of it somehow and it's intercepted. Picked off this time as LaVon Hyatt brings it back. So we have another turnover in the ball game, back to back. Bad throw by Jakari Atkinson. Once you're in the grasp with Stevie Johnson, either try to throw it out of bounds or just take the sack. The, the blitz pickup was done very well on this play, except for one guy. Watch 54 White. He's going to come free because 73 slides over, doesn't pick him up. Keith Butler doesn't see him because he comes on a delayed rush, and that in turn gives him an opportunity, LeVon Hyatt, to pick the football off. And that's only the ninth interception that Atkinson has thrown this year. So he had some pretty good numbers coming in in terms of completion to interception ratio as... Uh, Virginia Union decides to keep the ball on the ground on first and 10 from their own 27. There's LeVon Hyatt, the man who came up with the I INT. That is his third interception of the year. Transfer out of the College of Desert in California from Detroit's Pershing High. Very good, smart, solid football player also. Now it's rainy, they say, is the better cover guy, but out of the two of them, they do a very good job, and that's the one thing Willie Slater was worried about. He said those big cornerbacks, the cornerbacks like to make plays. Second down, Ilya Smith in the backfield. And Ilya Smith is a play action to him. Wide open on the far side, and it goes incomplete. They tried for Stephen Miller, who was out there momentarily open, but the ball was just a little bit too high for him. And that's the one area with Lamar Little trying to get outside, has to throw the ball really, really high. When you're talking about this offensive line, they lost Matthew Silva to a broken arm. Of course, uh, Kenneth Moses is not here. You have Tremaine Watson playing right guard. Blair moved over to the tackle. Uh, Tremaine Watson was playing all kinds of places. This is the first game for him all year long, number 72. Yeah. <laughs> not just not just uh, starting the first game that he's been in all year. The pressure coming on the quarterback. And somehow almost escaping, but not being able to get away that time from Tuskegee's Brandon Howard, number 56. He was coming with a vengeance, wasn't he? Well, Brandon didn't get him. Somebody put with the, uh, the jersey 
of Tuskegee was going to get him. He got away from one. Only that's a, good yeah. to do that. And oh. then trying to move away. I mean, five defenders there. He wasn't going to get away from that. That's just good. That initial wave of blitzing got him out of sync, and he wasn't able to get away from it. Only the 11th time this year that the quarterback has been sacked for Virginia Union. This is going to be a safety out of the end zone. Snapped over the head of the punter, Wayne Motley, and it'll be a safety. Two points added to the score for Tuskegee. Charlie, the one thing I worried about with this game was special teams and what role it was going to play. And, and, you know, this is a prime example. He had to be about 6'7", six, 6'8", six, to get that pass. One-point ball game, 17-16. More importantly, Tuskegee will get the ball when we come back. When hot, molten rock, ash, and gases erupt. escape from deep below the surface. It often results in a touchdown. For those who have what it takes on the inside, Russell has what it takes on the outside. At eHarmony, we match you across 29 dimensions of compatibility. And right now, not only can you log on to eHarmony.com and get your personality profile, you can also review your matches all for free. Aren't you curious to see who you would be matched up with according to compatibility? He loves me for me. Visit eHarmony.com and discover what so many singles have found. Log on today and review your eHarmony matches absolutely free. eHarmony.com Own it. When you put up a fat head, you're making a statement too big for words. A statement like this. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you need something more. How about the NFL, NBA, MLB, NASCAR? If you can think of a sports-related acronym, we probably got a fat head for you. The biggest names and moments captured at the height of intensity, plucked from the playing field like ripened fruit that can smack you in your ear hole. Nice work, fellas. Hall of Famers, ex-gamers, QB sackers, revitalized Packers, I'm starting to rhyme and I like it. Fat head. A passion that's been building and building, so put it in your building. Get your favorite fatheads from the NFL, plus MLB, NBA, NASCAR, and more. For a limited time, buy one and get half off the second at fathead.com. A tale of a couple of plays for one guy. The, the same thing that can make you laugh can make you cry. Now, you get this interception by LeVon Hyatt, number one, and he's on cloud nine. But then he comes back and makes a snap. He's not the normal snapper. So Marquise Davis usually is, and that was the, the reason why that snap was so high, unless they're wearing multiple numbers. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt it. But uh, as you said, here's the punt now. And it's going to be returned by Mario Jackson. Jackson across midfield. Jackson is on his way. Dances to the outside, cuts it back, and brought down from behind at the 19-yard line. Finally, on the stop, Marquise Johnson. But what a return and great field position once again. And Tuskegee threatening to blow this one open. Yeah, they are. And they're looking to come back with the vengeance that you expected to see from them early on. So from the 19-yard line, this is the third straight possession that Tuskegee has started in Virginia Union territory. They had a touchdown. The last one resulted in an interception. And let's see if they can put it in the end zone this time from the 19. First down and 10. Golden Tigers trailing by one. Forney is in the backfield. He has the ball. First time we've seen him today, and he gains four yards. Tony Forney out of Atlanta's McNair High, his first carry of the afternoon. And it was Stevie Johnson, the sophomore from Spotsylvania, Virginia, who made the stop. You know, you talk about the offensive line. Let's not forget Anthony Driver didn't make the all SIAC team. Yeah, <laughs> that's that was a crime. He was the best offensive lineman. I don't know how they figured that. They said maybe it's because he's the shortest of all of them. He's only 6'2. Everybody else is 6'6 six, six, and 6'3 six, and 6'5. Six, Here's a pitch to the left side, trying to turn the corner. Here's 40. And 
Forney is out at the two-yard line. He stepped out at the two. LeVon Hyatt made the stop defensively. You're going to see a couple of defenders get crossed up. Henry Tolliver, number nine, is going to be, you know, they, he's going to get tangled up over there, and he doesn't make, he's not over to make the play. Now, LeVon Hyatt does a good job, but watch Henry Tolliver. Right there, number well, nine. They and tip he, over each yeah, other. He trips yeah. over his own guy, Hurley Hemphill. So now Forney, the second back in the eye, has one rushing touchdown. Here's Fitzhugh trying for number three for the day. He has two touchdowns already. He's close, but not enough. Going to be stopped shy of the goal line. Richard Fitzhugh from Woodson High in Washington, D.C. Had just 506 yards and two touchdowns a year ago. Came in with 459 yards this season. But when you look at how they spread the wealth around, I mean, he's 459, his quarterback at 506. And a touchdown is signaled this time. And it was the quarterback, Jakari Atkinson, on the keeper. And that is his seventh rushing touchdown of the season. And I think they're going to go for two. And Jakari did a good job there of identifying where the open gap was, where the open hole behind Michael Stevenson Stevens to start and then he looked with, between Keith Butler and Kevin Jones the right guard and right tackle and just went over there and found the opening 604 the time remaining in the first half I was jokingly talking to the players on both teams the other night and I said well why don't we have another 64 58 ball game <laughs> I think the coaches thought I was crazy but that's what is maybe shaping up to be to be Atkinson throws it toward the end zone this could be run back for a two point conversion if they could keep it going but uh, it's not well Hurley Hemphill who we saw earlier get caught up with Henry Tolliver was the middle line is the middle linebacker and went over and got in front of that point after attempt. So the two point conversion is no good. Watch 51 to the right of your screen. So he's reading the eyes of Jakari Atkinson and he steps right there. All right. Atkinson's trying to throw it right behind him to Jason English. And then he turns around. Look at him, Phil. He looks like he's a, a running back. Turns around, stiff arms, tries to lateral it. Early, the leading tackler on this Panther team. There he is out of Kannapolis, North Carolina. Went to Northwest Cabarrus High School there. Second year starting, they say he brings power to that linebacking core. He's the sec second team all CIAA this past season. You know, Greg Richardson recruits North Carolina very well. There's a lot of North Carolinians on the uh, Virginia Union football team as well as South Carolina players as well. So now Tuskegee will be kicking off. Matt Sims puts it on the tee. a little don't hurt no more <laughs> sprayed on him <laughs> <laughs> the return for Virginia Union don't forget college basketball on ESPNU continues Sunday afternoon with a doubleheader Arizona State the Sun Devils face the Cornhuskers of Nebraska then following that will be the Cardinal of Stanford taking on the Colorado Buffalo it's the Big 12 Pac-10 hardwood series part of Jimmy V week on ESPNU on Sunday well, the Big 10 ACC thing they should I mean the Big 10 didn't show up <laughs> yeah the ACC just totally dominated that series First down and 10, Tuskegee at their own 32-yard line. Make that uh, Virginia Union at their own 32-yard line. Trying to bounce to the outside is Tarion Donaldson. First time he's run the ball today. It gives you a little change of pace at 5'9", 180 with good speed and cutback ability. You know, I talked about them recruiting North Carolina and South Carolina very well, but you also got to think that Tidewater area, all these guys from oh, Virginia yeah. Beach, Virginia, Hampton Roads, all they, they, they get some talent out of there. It's going to make you good. That's what Torian Donaldson Yeah, he had a 183 yard game against Johnson C. Smith earlier this year and three touchdowns rushing against Fayetteville State. So he can get it done along with Elihu Smith, who's back in the lineup. 
In the slot to the left is Terrence Cunningham. 22-17 is our score. It was a 17 to nothing lead in favor of Virginia Union, but Tuskegee has come back with 22 unanswered points. Fitzhugh's one-yard run, Fitzhugh's 10-yard run, a safety when the ball was snapped over the head of the punter for Virginia Union, then Atkinson a one-yard run, and that has rallied Tuskegee in this ball game. As you look at Arrington Jones, the third, fourth year, a graduate of Winston-Salem, was a running back at Winston-Salem and uh, on the staff there for a little while. In fact, the head coach, Kermit Blunt, and they were teammates in college at Winston-Salem. Kermit was the quarterback. He was also an assistant at Virginia State. Both of these coaches were named Coach of the Year in their respective conferences. Arrington Jones in the CIAA. Willie Slater, SIAC pass. Too big, incomplete. And actually almost got into the hands of Cunningham down there, who was behind everybody. There were five defenders in that area. And <laughs> Lamar Little still tried to throw that football. Right. Don't forget coming up at halftime on Sports Center U with Lowell Lindo and Steve Israel. Les Miles update. Well, what's, what's he going to do? Top 25 hoops? We've already heard. And then, of course, his championship Saturday. Well, they say he's staying, but remember the other day I did the coach's spotlight show on ESPNU, and he was talking about, well, they really weren't. Uh, they did, really didn't lose two games, if you look at it, because they've gone to overtime. A couple. He was trying to explain himself <laughs> away that they had never been beaten in the re in, uh, regulation. Regulation. Huh? Said, we don't care. He got beat two times this year. Third down and 14. Inside handoff or trying to flank or screen to Michael Hampton, and it goes awry, and it'll be a fourth down punting situation for... The Panthers. I think Virginia Union is getting away with they from away what they do best, and that's run the football and set up those short passes that they like to throw. That last one in the middle of the field, Tuskegee was all over it, and then that screen. Even if Hampton had caught it, it would have been very well defended. So fourth down facing Virginia Union. That'll bring on the punting team and Wayne Motley. Let's see a better snap this time, and he gets the kick off. It's going to be fielded by Mitchell. Antoine Mitchell has a little room over there and across midfield down to the 49 yard line. So they start once again. And you talked about Damian Craig. There he is on the sideline. He's the young man who's been given the task of working with Jakari Atkinson, the quarterback. And what better person to put him in that position? Well, and I agree with you, Charlie. And the other thing is that's why he came here, so he can coach quarterbacks. We talked a lot about that. He had a chance to play four years in the league, in the National Football League. And, you know, I thought coming out of Auburn, he was one of the best quarterbacks they've ever had. And you can argue Pat Dye and there's some other names. But Damian Craig said, hey, I came here so I could coach quarterbacks because usually if you coach quarterbacks or offensive coordinators, you get a chance to move up in the coaching rank. Well, that's uh, pretty advanced thinking. Atkinson throws incomplete on the far sideline, trying to get Fitzhugh coming out of the backfield. And speaking of that, you know, you're talking about coordinators. Got a chance to watch a little bit of uh, game day mm -hmm. this morning, and we were listening to them talk about the coaches association and I thought the coach made a very good point we should be at a point where we don't need the black coaches association yeah but they were talking about how the process hasn't been that fair but the 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 most interesting stat was the one 26 that was coordinators. by the coordinators offensive defensive coordinators out of you know, there are more coordinators than there are head coaches. Yeah, exactly. And, but and the percentages are less. They're less because you have two coordinators on each staff. Even if they have a, court, a head coach that calls the plays, they have coordinator titles. So there's two per team. Well, the Golden Tigers call a timeout. They're going to talk things over second down and 10. Here's a team trying to run the the whole gamut as far as the season is concerned coming into the day's game 11 and 0 basically we're not challenged throughout the season except for the last game that they played against Alabama State which they went into three overtimes the other close game that they played was Albany State uh, earlier in the season but they started the season with a uh, win over miles they beat Benedict Fort Valley Concord some Morehouse Stillman Albany State Kentucky State Clark Atlanta George Mason Alabama State and that's why they're 11 and 0 let's go to Lowell Galindo for an in-studio update Lowell. well guys coming up in the sports interview halftime report we have Steve Israel he's gonna break down the last mile situation tell you what it means for the SEC title game also college hoops and we have conference championship games what it means for the BCS coming up at the half
All right. Well, Char well. And that makes sense, Charlie, when you look at how many coordinators, that's 238 across all of college football. Well, we're here along with Charles R. Buckle. I'm Charlie Neal. It's the Pioneer Bowl number 10, Virginia Union. And Tuskegee going at it. Tuskegee in the maroon and gold. Virginia Union in the white uniforms. You know, Tuskegee not only 11 and 0, they've won 600 football games as far as a school, the first HBCU to achieve that milestone, and second in wins behind Pittsburgh State in Division II. Pittsburgh State has 621 wins. Here's the option to the right side. Handing it off to Forney. Forney down the sideline and Forney out of bounds at the 30 yard line. First down is gained. They have an interesting way Jakari Atkinson does of pitching the ball. He uses both hands as opposed to the old school option where you saw Jamel Holloway and some of those J.C. Watts, how they would pitch with one hand. He actually pushes it out almost like a push pass, almost like a bounce pass in basketball where it doesn't hit the ground but just goes out with yep. two hands. Seven-time SIAC Offensive Player of the Week. That is Jakari Atkinson. Started the season with 14 touchdown passes in the first four games. Threw just three in the next three games, but over the last four games before this one has 14 touchdown passes. So he can get it done. Here's an option again, and he keeps it straight ahead for a couple down inside the 30 to about the 27, 28-yard line. You know, Charlie, the other point, too, you got to make if, if – teams had more success meaning black colleges in the division one double a or division two championships you could see more of those coaches moving up think about a guy like brian kelly who was at grand valley state mm -hmm. who's now at uh, cincinnati before that he was at central michigan he won in those in those kind of the, those playoffs and that gets you notoriety and that's one of the reasons why a team like tuskegee as strong as they played this year what would they have done in the division two championship yeah and grand valley's uh trying to poise themselves to get back into the championship game once again the two-time defending champs he is wide open in the end zone touchdown for Tuskegee Jonathan. wide open in the end zone we're talking about it as Jonathan Lasa who's also the punter sophomore out of John Carroll High in Birmingham Alabama first catch we've seen in that part of the end zone in that part of the field Lesser didn't let it bother him he's the the punter also so multiple duty and that was a good throw by Jakari Atkinson, a good catch. So Jakari Atkinson with his first touchdown pass of the day. The other touchdowns have come by way of the ground attack, and he goes upstairs on this one, and that one was good for 28 yards. Does a good job of looking to the left and then coming back to the right. That holds the defense in the middle of the field. And for the point after, Matt Sims is on. This one is up. It's good. And now the score is 29 17 29 unanswered points by the Golden Tigers. They were down 17 to nothing and now they lead it 29 to 17 with 255 to go in the third quarter. So Atkinson with a touchdown run and a touchdown pass and the lead is 12. Well, they just really woken up this ball club for Tuskegee and really doing a good job of getting after it now and I talked about it. <laughs> where was this team that everybody expected to just come in here and dominate put up 40 some 40 plus points or more get off to such a slow start but that explosive offense is really key and their defense got to talk about Jarvis Devon oh yeah with Jarvis Devon I mean even Justin Hanna's been playing yeah. and he didn't even start you know he lost the starting job because of some disciplinary reasons but when he is in the lineup he's a force to be reckoned with he had a key interception in the Pioneer Bowl last year as a freshman and that helped Tuskegee win it they beat uh, Johnson C Smith in that one a year ago I believe it was Johnson C Smith that yeah 17 to 7 was the, the final score of that one so the defense has been the key for them this year they let it go out of bounds. It's going to be a penalty mark or drop. In fact, they were ranked second in the nation in three different categories run, scoring, and total defense, and ranked seventh 
in the nation in passing efficiency defense. Just saying they're real good. They're pretty good. <laughs> yeah, this is not a bad day. <laughs> well, and for them to put 29 points on the board, it's almost answering Virginia Union. Virginia right. Union said, hey, we scored 17. We're good. All right. So right. Skeegee said, now we're going to put the big boy pads on and show you we're going to score 29. Right, in the first half. half time. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, you're talking about defense. There are three former Tuskegee defensive backs that are playing in the National Football League right now. Drayton Florence with the San Diego Chargers. Frank Walker in his fifth year with Green Bay and Dimitri Patterson, second year man with the Kansas City Chiefs. So they turned out some some defensive backs over the years. First down and ten now for Virginia Union. Little in trouble and still on his feet. Now he's going to be brought out of bounds in front of his own bench. Charlie, that's one of the best one-yard loss runs I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> if there is such a thing, right? Yeah, it's a misnomer. <laughs> I mean, make it a two-yard loss. You know, we talk about Bayou ability, uh, being able to go by you, and he's able to do that. This is the low country, though. I guess these folks are south. They don't call it the bayou, <laughs> right? <laughs> Down in Texas and in Louisiana, we call it the bayou. He has bayou ability. Back to pass with an empty backfield as little. This time has it on the far sideline. Complete. And coming up with the reception is Stephen Miller. Let's take this defensive approach and you turn up the intensity. Match the color of those jerseys. Red hot. Coming after you now. Lamar Little had a lot of time and then the, the, the miscues on special teams always seem to play a big role in games. Hidden points, I like to call them. If you don't, you don't expect those points to come up. All right. And then they do two points there, and then a short field there. That gives you more points. And that was good for first down. As you look at Tuskegee points allowed, 12.8 points per game coming in, leading the SIC to Devon. Today they gave up 17, which is not uh, indicative of what they normally do. But they had a shutout in a couple games too. Here's Little, a little dance to the outside, and he's close to another first down. The ball is loose. The ball is loose. Tuskegee may have it. They're jumping for joy in front of the sideline. And let's see what the officials say. It's right in front of the Virginia Union bench. Lamar Little had an outstanding move to get open and continue to go down the field. And they're going to say it's still, Tus uh, should say, Virginia Union will maintain possession. So it was fumbled. It came back. And the ball is going to be spotted right at the 49-yard line of Tuskegee, about four yards shy of a first down. Let's see it. Broke the There's the ball out. Yeah. The ball is out, clearly. Watch this move right here, though. Whoop! Out of, out of the way. And then the ball rolls out of bounds. I don't think we see it, but it went out of bounds. There he is. Running to the left side and running out of bounds. And should have enough for a first down is the quarterback. Lamar Little. Jonathan Harris is still trying to figure out where Lamar Little is on that. <laughs> I mean, anytime you see that replay, he's going to go back and try to TiVo and say, man, man, if I had just done this. <laughs> they said Little made a play in the goal bowl against uh, Bowie State earlier this year. Here's the as fumble. you look at it, and the ball, they're saying it went out of bounds. And it squirts across this field. Now, sometimes it'll stop in certain yeah. places, but then again to that out of bounds. slick yeah. field. First down and 10. And we're going to talk about uh, the play that he made in the goal hole against Bowie State. Here's Little going back to play. Pass puts it up there. And this is intercepted. Intercepted. That's and that's going to be a penalty. Yeah. Did, was it a flag? Marquise Davis. Yeah, they threw the flag. Okay, on. I was going to say that was a real late <laughs> hit out of bounds. Well, Justin Hanna. Hanna. Six, we were just talking yeah. about Justin Hanna <laughs> just a little while ago, and the fact that uh, here was a kid that made a big uh, interception last year in the Pioneer Bowl. You know, a lot of people stay away from his side of the field. Well, he played, you know, played center field on this one. Yes. Yeah. Actually, it wasn't Justin Hanna, excuse me. 41. Jeremy Obi. Obi. Okay, 41 instead of 14. Jeremy Obi, a sophomore out of High Point, North Carolina. His third interception of the year. You put that ball up against this defense, they're going to really come away with some turnovers. And then on top of that, Marquise Davis comes over and blasts them. They were plus nine turnover margin, Tuskegee coming into today. And Virginia Union plus eight, but remember, 
in one of their key games early in the year against Elizabeth City. Six turnovers. So in talking earlier about this, ball protection and security are going to be key. And then you can also call that high snap a turnover because it gave them two points and you lose the football. Fifth straight time Tuskegee has gotten the ball in Virginia Union territory and here's Atkinson wanting to go upstairs fits you with the reception and he has a first down inside the 30 to the 29 yard line before Ernest Robinson was there defensively for Virginia Union Charlie what does rhythm do to people gets them up gets them feeling good gets them moving around and they have the rhythm going right now that is Tuskegee as I said fifth straight time they've started in Virginia Union territory and they were able so far to convert four or three of those four previous possessions and into, into, into touchdowns Antoine Mitchell on that one it just looks like now seven on seven drills where you're in practice and there's no offensive and defensive line and the quarterback is able to hit every single completion Jakari yeah. Atkinson is Atkinson started the season 14 touchdown passes as I said he has at least three he had no touchdown passes against Albany State one against Morehouse two against Stillman all the other games he had at least three touchdown passes he had five against Benedict here on this field early in the season and he's sacked so we get the first sack of the day by Virginia Union on the quarterback Jakari Atkinson who was well well protected this year was only sacked 14 times all season long well, the Brandon, most sacks in the game was three and that was uh, Brandon Smith by Albany State yeah Brandon Smith was there to come up with the sack three sacks against St. Aug for him this year and here's Atkinson going to the air once again under pressure Atkinson he's gonna run it away and Brandon Smith he just missed him Henry Tolliver was I mean Audrey Hurley Hemphill was coming up and tried to push Jakari Atkinson and just missed him <laughs> just flat out whiffed on him and Atkinson was able to pick up some more yards and the Brandon Smith on that last sack just got tired of it he said okay I'm tired of this <laughs> let's make a play here well you know they were talking and you talk to the quarterback coach you talk to Willie Slater and you talk about Atkinson and the fact that he is a junior and last year played behind Kevin Huff but his maturation started in the spring of 06 yeah. because Huff wasn't able to go in spring practice yeah, he so he he had to uh, he got a lot of uh, quality time in the spring game and spring practice in 06 and again this year of course because this was going to be his year well, and he got to play last year also at Spurks and Times, and I think that's the one thing they were really excited about him being yeah. behind Huff. And if Huff had struggled at all, or when he did struggle, they felt comfortable going to Jakari Atkinson. Yeah, electrical engineering major out of Valley, Alabama. Went to Valley High down there. Jakari Atkinson, 6'3", 210-pound junior, SIC offensive player of the year and most valuable player, led the nation in passing efficiency. In Division Two, 188 was his passing efficiency score. Ranked 16th in the nation in total offense, 277 yards per game, led the conference in passing, efficiency, and total offense. And his counterpart on the other side, Lamar Little, was a, one of the finalists, the 24 finalists for the Harlan Hill Trophy that goes to the Division Two Player of the Year. You know, both both of these players are really outstanding in their own rights. But Jakari Atkinson also, too, was talking to Damian Craig. He said he is really, really smart and understands how the game of football is supposed to be played. Going to the air. Into the end zone. Touchdown, Mitchell. Antoine Mitchell with his second reception for a touchdown today. Whenever you give Atkinson that much time and you don't bring the pressure, this Tuskegee team knows how to turn it on, and they come at you. Now, Atkinson, again, looking off the receiver. He doesn't stay on him. Looks outside, comes back to the middle, and you can see there's defense on top and, and up below, but he's still able to get that ball in there. Robert Moore on the top, Melvin Edison on the bottom. They can't cover. Good throw, good catch. 19-yard pass to Mitchell. So two touchdown passes today by Atkinson and their lead has been extended. 
to 36 17 remember they were down 17 to nothing with 246 to go in the first quarter we're still in the first half and they've put up 36 unanswered points that is the Golden Tigers of Tuskegee you're trying to not only go unbeaten 12 and 0 but come up with another black national championship you know, they <laughs> they look like the team that we talked about before this game and that intensity level has changed Charlie tremendously they've come out in the second quarter fired up made the adjustments and done a very good job of now getting after this Virginia Union football club five of their last six possessions they've scored the only one they didn't score they threw an interception on an ill-advised pass by Atkinson but they've started five straight possessions in Virginia Union territory and have scored on four of them. Well, let's look at this also. Now, you have the ball with 32 seconds. You have a chance. You need to come away with some points, and you get the ball in the second half of the Virginia Union. Correct. So let's take care of the football. Don't make any turnovers. If you're Arrington Jones' ball club, score some points. Try to get back in this game slowly. Don't try to do it all at one time. And you look at the mistakes that Tuskegee made early. Of course, most of those those touchdowns that Virginia Union scored were on long pass plays. They had an 84 yarder and a 72 yarder. Here's a return by Cunningham. And he just stops and asks for trouble. You don't stop in the way of the freight train. You don't stop with the tracks when the gate's down. <laughs> you better keep going. <laughs> back up or, or go on the other side <laughs> Stephen Freeman reserve running back was the man who leveled Mr. Cunningham you're right you don't stop with the train coming <laughs> from their own 12 yard line Virginia Union with time running out here in the first half will get the ball people get ready the trains coming right no question <laughs> at their own 25 just a six yard return I should say at their own 12 just a six yard return changes a little bit because now you don't want to give Tuskegee this ball back at all. You want to make sure you take care of the ball. I would just run the clock yeah. out. <laughs> That's what they're going to do. And they keep it on the ground. Ilya Smith on the carry out to about the 14-yard line. Clock still running. Yeah, it's just one of those things now. You go in at halftime. If you had a long return, get you out to the 30 or 40, then you take a shot at the end zone or you try that. But smart heads up play you get the ball in the second half this Tuskegee team has really shown that they're out and fired up now and ready to play some football 36 17 our halftime score Tuskegee rallying from 17 points down to take the big lead now let's go to the studio ESPNU studio with Lowell Galindo and Steve Israel bands heating up at the Pioneer Bowl we got the marching Crimson Piper band check them out to our ears right here on sport they are back the marching crimson piper band doing their things moves that we only see from steve israel here on the set of sports center you you can move like that right <laughs> uh too many knee surgeries too many knee surgeries you yeah too many the marching crimson piper band getting it done let's take a listen Enough said on ESPNU. 
as we get ready to start the second half here Pioneer Bowl 10 in Columbia South Carolina Charlie Neal along with Charles R. Buckle and what stands out in your mind when you look at the first half of this contest Charles you know the way both teams took one quarter and just really maximize what they could do do some different things as far as scoring points and really getting a, a jump on the other team and not allowing them to get back in the game in those times. However, Virginia Union, Union did it early. They got 17, and then you see Tuskegee coming away with 36 in the second. So they matched the intensity level, and Virginia Union wasn't able to come back and capitalize. Unfortunately for them, and when you look at the yards, I mean, total yards, uh, 224 for Tuskegee, 143 for Virginia Union. Uh, turnovers, I guess if you might want to say that, two turnovers plus the bad snap, which resulted in a safety, which has hurt Virginia Union in this contest so far. I think the other thing that hurt them, too, is not being able to run the football. The yards are mis they're miscalculating because Sack's going to that for rushing yards, only 28. But that's what they like to mm -hmm. do. And Tuskegee has almost made them one-dimensional by not allowing them to run the football. And we're not talking about 28. We're talking about minus 28. Yeah, minus 28. <laughs> yeah, that's even worse. Yes, it uh, is. <laughs> it's minus 28. But when they uh, average on the year 225 a game. Well, Virginia Union will get the ball to start the second half. Their first two possessions, they went right down the field and put some points on the board. In fact, their first three, they even wound up with a field goal. Cunningham is deep to receive this. And here, trying to reverse the field and get to the outside is Donaldson. And Donaldson up the sideline, has something going. Donaldson still on his feet, finally run out of bounds on the far sideline by Jonathan Harris. But a great return, and a flag is down. Let's see where the penalty marker is. And it's either going to be a block in the black back or a clip. And I right. saw it happen right at where the flag is dropped. Boy, what a return yeah. there by Tyrion Donaldson because he was bottled up on the near sideline at about the 20 and found something on the opposite side and was able to reverse his field and get something going. Well, they're impressed by his speed, and clearly he's, he showed there how fast he could run and what he could do. Well, our officiating crew, led by Mike Brown, they're going to call a block below the waist. But they called it against Tuskegee. Personal foul against, they may kick this one over. So do we have two penalties offsetting? Block below the waist, and then we have a personal foul. We've already seen one major snafu with this officiating crew this game with I don't want to belabor it but you know the, again it was a pass interference penalty in the end zone in case you missed it in the first half Should have been marked off and the ball 15. was at the 35 yard line when the play started they spotted the ball at the 10 rather than at the 20 yard line all right here we go refused Blocking below the waist. Now you got to talk to the other team. They're taking a lot of time to do yeah. this, aren't they? I'm going to miss our plane. <laughs> <laughs> I always tell them, I said, you know, I've got a plane to catch in the morning. Blocking below the waist. So it is first down and 10. Still not bad field position for Virginia Union as they start here in the second half. They'll get the ball at the 44-yard line. Well, it was a good individual effort play by Torian Donaldson. He showed that speed that you talk about. Let's see what Virginia Union comes out. They don't have a tight end. They run usually three, four wides. They have everybody split empty backfield. Empty backfield and the quarterback working from under center. Is our quarterback Little still on his feet and Little gains yardage out to about the 49 yard line a gain of five yards on the play and it was Jonathan Hall number 55 
on the stop, a walk on, preseason second team all conference selection. There he is, second team, uh, number two tackler, I should say, on the team from Mobile, Alabama, went to LaFleur High down there. You know, Reginald Ruffin, the defensive coordinator, also said seeing Jay Peck last week really helped prepare for this Pioneer Bowl because of the similarities between he and Lamar Little. Oh, yes. Well, Lamar Little is, Jay Peck is a running back, but you know, evade, the way he's evade, evades evade. people. <laughs> yeah. And here, trying to turn the corner is Lamar Little, and it was Devon who made the stop defensively. Devon's been all over the place today. You know, they've done a very good job of, of containing that running game, and Remember that's what, what he, he is. When we talked to Coach the other day, what did he call <laughs> Devon? The quiet assassin. Yeah, he did. He said he's going to be the key guy for us today uh, when we play. Virginia Union because he's not only going to help us in the the pass pro game he's going to also give us an opportunity in the running game this will be the fourth time first time in the school's history that is Tuskegee they've had four straight 10 win seasons and we're going to have a procedure penalty against Virginia Union University in terms of penalties in the first half Virginia Union was penalized five times, Tuskegee three times. I think he's forgotten which direction these teams are going. <laughs> Jarvis Devon out of Katy, Texas, Taylor High School, right out of I-10. Mm -hmm. First team all-conference selection. This time, little works from the shotgun. As trips receivers on the right side. Holds it a little long there. Finally gets it off and has it complete to Stephen Miller. And Stephen Miller is brought down by Jonathan Hall. Make that Cunningham. I'm sorry. Make that Philip Taylor on the reception. Number three, the junior out of Centerville, Virginia from Minchville High. And he picks up the first down. They move the chains down to the 37-yard line. That's what Taylor usually works. They don't use a tight end, but he's 6'1", 195. He's a slot guy most of the time and will make the catches over the middle of the field. He lines up wide, but when they need him to work the middle, he's there. Going first and 10. Now, you can see by that that Lamar Little, that was a design quarterback draw. Yeah. I mean, he had no intentions of handing that ball to anybody, and it was just a matter of picking his hole as Malcolm Crutchfield, number 92, was there to make the stop. But when you talk to Coach Arrington Jones and he talks about the, the team coming into the season, he wasn't so much worried about the offense, but he knew he had to revamp the defensive side of the ball. Last season, they finished last in the CIAA in total defense where this year they did a much better job in total defense. They finished fourth in the conference. Second down and 10. They were ranked third in the preseason polls. Here again is Little on the keeper. Fumble. And let's see. Only problem with your quarterback handling the ball that much is you have a chance for him to give the ball away. And Tuskegee is saying they have it. But, but the, the officials, officials are saying he's down by contact. Jason Stanley on the stop defensively and so Union will keep the ball it'll be third down take a look here on the replay carrying that ball away from his body and it's yeah, coming out before was, he actually touched yeah, he, down. He was, it was out if we had replay in this particular game you would see you know, but, but the other thing that Virginia Union is doing is they're taking their time little is spreading the, there's no one in the backfield so clearly he's going to be the runner now this time they're coming with two backs in the backfield as a pass they were on the last few plays they were running empty backfield Davis and Smith in the backfield behind little in an eye formation and it goes to Ilya Smith dances to the outside good play by Jonathan Hall who tripped him up as he tried to turn the corner a pickup of only two yards on the play to be second down and eight now, Jonathan Hall is really showing up this uh, Ilya Smith went off the field shaking up but Jonathan Hall has done a good job in this second half showing up see you on this on the season you know, always around the football making tackles tackles for loss and sacks there and he had a pretty good first half in this particular ball game Jonathan Hall 
had a big game against Alabama State on Thanksgiving Day. Back to pass. And the quarterback, again, Lamar Little, trying to run it out of there. That was a good rush but by Brandon, Brandon Howard. I was going to say Brandon Howard didn't allow, allow him to get too far. And he also had some help out there from some of his friends. Yeah, Brandon Anderson did a good job rushing 59 and coming up and then taking off to go get him. That allowed him to not get away completely. So Brandon Howard was there. And that's what you have to do now. These rushers, the front four, are coming off really hard. But then they're also kind of spying in the backfield to find out where number four is. So to bring up a third down situation for Virginia Union, third and five. Going to the air. He throws that one in the dirt. Well, Michael his, Hampton, the intended receiver. Yeah, Henry he did. Turner came, came on the blitz. And in Lamar return Little. out of Parker High in Birmingham. Lamar Little takes a shot. You're going to see 51 come free, untouched. You know, you can't miss those middle. You can miss them on the outside and have a chance, but the quarterback has no chance to complete a pass if he's come if it comes right up the middle. 40-yard field goal attempt by Gil Hernandez. Make it a 39-yard field goal attempt. They're missing somebody on the offensive side. Now the ball, his longest is 39. That was against St. Augustine's this year. He's already hit one earlier today from 21 yards out. 39-yard attempt has the distance, but it is no good. So the 39-yard field goal goes awry. And it's still 17 points on the board for Virginia Union. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I need you to step back. Probably my ring. Um, cell phone, jewelry, or... Another ring. Okay. Um, anything in your pocket? Or... Uh, oh, 2003. Forget about that one. After more than 90 years, the Southern Intercollegiate Athletic Conference is still flying high as a steward for academic and athletic excellence. The conference is comprised of 12 full member institutions and one provisional member and offers 13 men and women's varsity sports. SIAC student athletes and coaches always try to reach for the pinnacle of collegiate excellence to be named national champions. Join us as we witness history in the making. If you've had it with raking leaves every year, let me send you one of our DR Leaf and Lawn Vacuums for use on your property this fall. The DR Leaf and Lawn Vacuum attaches to your riding mower and will vacuum up a yard full of leaves while you ride. Our patented shark tooth impeller shreds leaves to a fraction of their original volume. For smaller properties, DR also offers walk-behind models to clean up large, open areas and all those hard-to-reach spots. You'll be impressed with either machine, but if you decide to return the DR, we'll come pick it up and you won't be out a penny. If you decide to keep it, you'll make no payments and pay no interest for six months. Call today, 1-800-418-1910, for free details about the exciting DR Leaf and Lawn Vacuum, including how you can try one risk-free. So call 1-800-418-1910 or visit drleafvac.com. DR is professional power for homeowners. Laura Galindo here with the Sports Interview Update. Dr. Pepper, ACC Championship. Virginia Tech taking the lead with this touchdown from Sean Glennon to Eddie Royal. Boston College is driving right now. They do face a fourth and four. And in the SEC title game, the team that has scored first has won the last seven. Tennessee with the first touchdown. They lead 7-zip. Get ready for play. Along with Charles Arbuckle, I'm Charlie Neal. Welcome Back to Charles or Charlie W. Johnson Stadium on the campus of Benedict College, a gorgeous arena here, 11,000 seat stadium. Second year of operation, and they're going to play the Pioneer Bowl here for the next, including this year, two years after that. That's the deal right now, and they're hoping for a long term deal and to build this up here because it's, a, it's just a fantastic facility. Yeah, it is. And I mean, you have the field turf here, you have the press box that's very nice. Everything is just a, a good setting here. 
probably maybe one of the nicest stadiums you'll see on an HBCU campus anywhere. It, it stacks up there really high. So second down and eight for Tuskegee right now. This drive started at their own 22-yard line. Atkinson wants to go to the air. Atkinson dances around the defense, gets up field, and goes out of bounds in front of his own bench, but not before he reaches the 35 and picks up a first down. About a 12 or 11-yard run for Atkinson. Atkinson led his team in rushing this year, 506 yards, had 159 yards rushing his last outing in the Thanksgiving Day Classic or the Turkey Day Classic against Alabama State in that uh, three-overtime win. And they've had pretty good success in the Pioneer Bowl. Tuskegee 5-2 and two in this particular game. Their only loss came to Winston-Salem in 99, and they also lost to Shaw in 2004. This is the fourth straight year, or fifth, well, maybe one, two, three, four, five, six times, straight time they've been in the Pioneer Bowl. They did not play the game in 2002, and that's the trophy that they're playing for. In fact, the Mr. McLeod, the assistant commissioner of the SI, uh, CIAA, said he had just enough room in the trunk of his car to take that back to <laughs> Virginia Beach with him. But, of course, the people in the SIAC have other thoughts. <laughs> well, I'll tell you the other thing. When you look at Coach Slater, he's the offensive coordinator and the head coach. Both of these guys, Arrington Jones and Coach Slater, are both offensive coordinators. And you see with this Tuskegee team, a lot of multiple formations, multiple looks, multiple personnel grouping. Tuskegee must have the biggest center in the world, don't they? Here's a pass in and out of the hands of Mitchell. I think he thought that it was going to be deflected by the defensive back coming over, Niles Rainey, but Niles never got his hands on it, and it went in and out of the hands of Mitchell. But you're talking about the center, Michael Stevens. He comes in at 380, 6 foot 5. And he's the biggest center I've ever seen. Yeah, he is. He is. And normally a guy that big plays outside, but... Even the coaches say he need to get he needs to get in better shape, but he's done a good job inside. Actually moves pretty well for a guy his size. There he is, number 63, 380 pounds. On third down, Fitzhugh is open, but he is not going to be seen by the quarterback who runs down the sideline, but steps out of bounds and takes a licking. But he's still ticking. Yeah, Niles Rainey. <laughs> Was along with Jared Jackson. <laughs> yeah, they were coming up to get him. That'll bring up a fourth down situation, but look at the shot that uh, Ja'Carri Atkinson takes going down the sideline. Well, this is the one thing you don't want to expose yourself to if you don't have to. And Atkinson is already out of bounds right about there, and then, whoo! Jared Jackson. But you know what? He didn't behind. go down. Yeah, <laughs> he, he didn't did. go down. <laughs> he stayed up. He stayed up. He certainly did. <laughs> Punting situation. And Cunningham dropped at the 35-yard line. By Kelvin Robbins. We'll be back. ESPNU Coaches Spotlight. Tuesdays at 1. Only on ESPNU. Is the season for college hoops. At 7.30, the Buckeyes look to knock off number 16, Butler. Then at 9.30, number 15, Indiana, takes on 22nd-ranked Southern Illinois. Hoop it up tonight, beginning at 7.30 on ESPNU. You've heard the legendary Tuskegee story. Today at Tuskegee University, students learn to fly, grow food for NASA, develop space-age materials, design affordable sound homes, and help improve education in Alabama schools. Students earn degrees from bachelor's to Ph.D. level, becoming engineers, veterinarians, nurses, teachers, scientists, business professionals, and artists. Tuskegee University students enjoy modern residential living along with high-tech research facilities. Call 1-800-622-6531 or go online at tuskegee.edu. Enter the $66,000 free throw giveaway from Phillips 66. Game on. The doctor is in and he's about to operate. You could win a chance to shoot four free throws at the Phillips 66 Mountain West Conference Basketball Championship in Vegas. Each shot is worth big money. Sink all four and win $66,000. So get to practice and get to your nearest Phillips 66 store to register. Whatever. Pioneer Bowl 10. 
in Columbia, South Carolina. It's been all Tuskegee after they trail 17 to nothing and 36 under answered points by Tuskegee. And now Virginia Union with the ball. Little with some time. Tries to rush out to the pocket and is up across the 40-yard line and gets a good block out there from Ilyu Smith. His running back really laid the wood on one of the defensive backs from Tuskegee University. For up to the minute news for everything that is college sports, log on to ESPNU.com. And if you do not have ESPNU, be sure to log on to ESPNU.com and type in your zip code at the top of the page or call your local cable operator or satellite provider. Log on to ESPNU.com today because we are college sports. You know, he peeled back on the defensive end, Danny Anderson. Did a very good job of picking him up. He certainly did. And first down is gained by the running back, Lamar Little. From the I formation, they work this time. Little with a quick drop. Has the pass. Complete inside the 40. Cunningham has it all the way down. And make that Philip Taylor has it all the way down to the 36-yard line before Justin Hanna was there to make the stop. Now let's check out a little ESPNU trivia. Which two teams played in the first live televised college football game right here on ESPNU? We'll have the answer later. I, I, I can't cheat or give you. I did the game, so I remember that. All right, Charles. <laughs> first down and 10. In motion is Hampton. Little dancing in trouble, still in trouble and somehow got away from one man but couldn't get away from Kareem Anderson finally brought him down and he loses yards all the way back across the 40 to the 42. You know the reason he came to Virginia Union Charlie is because they allowed him to stay at quarterback. A lot of teams wanted him as a DB or a running back and he shows you here how effective he is when he plays running back. When he has the ball in his hands, he's good, but nowhere to run, and Kareem Anderson does a good job of corralling him on that one. Yeah, he was a Harlan Hill candidate, which goes to the top Division II player that's been narrowed now down to nine finalists, and he did not make that nine finalist list, but he was in the top 24 just a few weeks ago. And this pass goes incomplete. And you're talking about him, uh, Lamar Little, Player of the week against Virginia State tied two school records. He was 12 of 17, 255 yards and five touchdowns. Ran for one in that one. And in the goal bowl against Bowie State, 12 of 22. Well, you know, he also is a very good athlete. He played yeah. football, basketball, and ran track and field in high school. And he shows you a lot of those crossover and cross training things that guys can do, mm -hmm. especially from the quarterback position. In the CIAA championship game against Shaw University. Through for 112 yards. This one is complete. And all the way down inside the 24 first down is Stephen Miller before Frank Williams was there defensively. Nice throw here. Watch 55 Jonathan Hall flash on your screen. He does there and then he does again. You see 55 out, out of the area. He runs out of that zone. And that was a good job by Stephen Miller just setting up right there, making himself available. You're going to see it here. Hall runs too far over, mm -hmm. and then the receiver just settles in the hole. And Lamar Little with a nice pass as well. With 6-10 to go, third quarter. There's been no scoring here in the second half of this ball game. They're trying to set up the screen, and it's complete. And it's complete to Stephen Miller, who's in the end zone for a touchdown. Well, that's almost one of those no, no, no throws because know. Kareem Anderson was right there and almost can come up 99 with the interception, but Stephen no, Miller. it goes to Stephen Miller and it goes for six. 18-yard touchdown pass. It's a screen what? and Stephen what? Miller. Look at the look at the offensive lineman. They, it looks like they're going to hit him in the back. Well, watch 99. Oh, he sees it. Look, he gets he can't hit, do anything. but he turns the other way. <laughs> He's face guarding, huh? <laughs> And now Gil Hernandez on for the point after. It was 17 to nothing. Virginia Union, they hadn't scored. They'd given up 36 unanswered points, and now they put some more points on the board. First points of the second half. And now it's a 36-24 ball game. And Little with his third touchdown pass of the afternoon.
FGAuto.com. Well, there's your look at the young man who got them in position and then took it into the end zone. Stephen Miller, the junior out of San Diego, California, completed the seven play 65 yard drive and put his team within 36 24. And they just missed a field goal in their previous drive. They might have pulled it within nine. Here's Mario Jackson at the 10 yard line on the return for Tuskegee. Mario Jackson up across the 30 to about the 32 yard line. Charlie before that score for Virginia Union I was getting ready to say they're working so hard to score points but on that drive they did a very good job of coming back and methodically marching down the field capitalizing and also very poor tackling by the Tuskegee defense in the secondary on that touchdown. I talked to coach Willie Slater and I said uh, were you surprised at the success you had this year, especially with Jakari Atkinson being basically a first-year starting quarterback, succeeding Kevin Huff? And he said he was somewhat surprised yeah, yeah. at the at the success that they had, but uh, he'll take it. You know, 11 and 0, <laughs> you're not going to look a gift horse in the mouth, right? Yeah, you're not going to argue about that. First down and 10, the handoff to Fitzhugh, and Fitzhugh is up to the 39-yard line. And our trivia we asked earlier. Which two teams played in the first live televised college football game on ESPNU? Well, it involved this Benedict Tigers team. It was not played here at Benedict College, but Benedict College was involved in it, and they played that game in Atlanta on the campus of Morehouse College August 25th, 2005. I did that game with Eddie Robinson, Jr. And what a facility they built here. Charlie W. Johnson, businessman. That's who the stadium is named after very successful trucking company that he owns it is second down now for Tuskegee second and about four here's Atkinson on the option to the right pitches over to Fitzhugh cutting back inside and Fitzhugh is going to have the first down and as Marcus Johnson the freshman out of Northeast High in Philadelphia with the stop let's go to Lowell Belindo in the studio Lowell fellas the Dr. Pepper ACC championship game is well you surprised I am a little surprised by that I thought Boston College was going to win that game but Virginia Tech has really started to play well late in the season and I think that's what's up right now here's Atkinson one to the air complete to Fitzhugh over the middle and Fitzhugh is down inside the 45 to the 44 yard line. Let's look at the updated BCS standings right now. Missouri 11 and 1. This was uh, the ones that were just released this week. And of course West Virginia number two. That looks like maybe the national championship if all holds out. Ohio State still has an outside chance. And then there's Georgia Kansas and Virginia Tech. What do you think. Well, I think if Missouri Who do you like for the national championship? Missouri wins, they, they play West Virginia. It'll be a game a lot of people want to see. That should have been and was close to being intercepted by Niles Rainey, who was covering Jason English downfield. But uh, Rainey, or uh, English rather, had to turn around and play DB on that. Yeah, Knocked you, the ball away. He did. And if you're getting back to the BCS standings, if you're Ohio State, you've got to be hoping for a lot of things to happen in front of you. One in particular, the Missouri game this evening on ABC. Who do you like for the Heisman? You know, I, I, I like McFadden earlier in the year. I like what Chase Daniel is doing, and Tim Tebow would be the top. I, out of those guys, I would, I'd like Chase Daniel for what he's been able to do for Missouri. Nearly perfect in their big uh, win of the season. The biggest win of the season as we look at uh, our quarterback, Ja'Kari Atkinson. Just, just running a rough shot over the defense right there before Niles Rainey was there to make him make the stop. And that's the reason why a quarterback that can do the things like Jakari Atkinson right there shows you that ability to get up the field and make a play with his legs. I know a lot of people like Tim Tebow, but I think some of those touchdowns he's made, especially in, on the run, have been short variety. I just, I, I just really like what Chase Daniel has done with that Missouri ball club. First down and ten at the 25-yard line now. At the 24 goes Fitzhugh. You know, you're talking about 
postseason playoffs and the question always comes up and you alluded to it earlier in the first half Charles about the fact that Tuskegee always comes up on how well they would do in the Division two playoffs if they didn't play that Turkey Day Classic but no one on the Tuskegee side of the street seems to care <laughs> as long as they have a good showing against their biggest rival and that's Alabama State which they did in three overtimes this year yeah it's hard to change those rivalries and and, and those games the way they fall they want to keep it and, and I understand that it works for them and of course we look at uh, the success that the, the schools HBCUs have had in the postseason this year it hasn't been very good Albany State Shaw University representing the uh, SIC and the CIAA respectively and also Delaware State getting drilled by the University of Delaware in the football championship subdivision playoffs and yeah, you got a player down Reginald Smalls you know a couple of years ago did the Hampton uh, Richmond game and that's you know where Hampton had all that talent Alonzo Coleman and all those guys they had and they thought they were really going to show well and they couldn't get it done yeah and, and I think those are the, the things that hurt too for the black coaches if they would play and then play well in those things we talked about it before the game and we talked about it at uh, ad nauseum the last few years Eddie Robinson Award mm -hmm. has not been given to a African-American coach if I'm not mistaken no, so that's true <laughs> that's very true and you know you talk I talked to coach Slater this week and asked him if he wondered how his team would do in the playoffs or if it, even if he wished his team uh, was in the playoffs and he told me it really wasn't something he thought about in fact yeah. they asked him that question when he interviewed for the job and he said he, uh, you know he, if he I can said, get to the Pioneer Bowl he, Charlie he said that but I still think he in the back and this, of your mind he and this staff they won't come out and publicly say it but I'll say it for him they feel like they could play against anybody in the division two level in that playoff system well the playoffs are going full tilt right now here's a touchdown should be not there yet Jason English with the ball at the one yard line Rainey made the stop defensively but what a bullet thrown in there by the quarterback Jakari Atkinson well, and you get a quarterback that's hot like Jakari Atkinson imagine what he could do in those playoffs but right here he's done a very good job and I can tell he's been coached very well by Damian Craig having him look players off finding the, where to throw the football and a step before the defenders can get to him trying to come back into the lineup was Reginald Small with not enough time and they try to hand it off and run the ball into the end zone and they're trying to push Jakari Atkinson. <laughs> Fitzhugh trying to push his quarterback into the end zone, and it was not going to happen. <laughs> you know, this, Second and goal. It makes it tough for your defense when Atkinson decides to run, or if he's you know sitting back in that pocket and his big offensive line starts wearing you down. We talked about how big they are, and that you know Michael Stevens takes up the whole screen right there, number 63. He's 6'5", 380, and then the guard next to him, 6'2", 330, driver, and Keith Butler, 6'1", 300. There's some big guys in there. Well, there's a timeout being called. With a minute 26 left in the third quarter, Virginia Union wants to talk, call a timeout. You know, one of the other things we talk about, Charles, and it's very uh, evident, is the fact that the, the number of scholarships that Division yeah. two teams are allowed to have is much different. They only allow 36 scholarships as opposed to the football championship subdivision, which allows 63, and of course the football bowl subdivision allows 85. Now we'll come back and talk about that. Uh, don't forget college basketball right here on ESPNU continues tonight with three games. Right after our game, it'll be number three, or make it number third, three and four, Michigan. They have a three and four record this year. The Wolverines, they face Harvard, the Crimson. And then at 7.30 Eastern, the four and two Ohio State Buckeyes with a seven-foot freshman take on number 16, Butler, and the Braves. Then at 9.30, number 15, Indiana Hoosiers, led by the super freshman, Eric Gordon, averaging 27 points per game. They take on the Salukis of Southern Illinois. It's college basketball presented by City, part of V-Week here on ESPNU. And again, the going is rough in terms of running, and they can't get into the end zone. Or did they call a touchdown? He got in there. Or they call a touchdown. So Fitzhugh with his third rushing touchdown of the afternoon. This comes from one yard out. 
He scored with 13.32 left in the second, and then he scored with 11.27 left in the second. But Charlie, getting back to that scholarship talk, though, even though you have 36, can you fund all 36? And that's, and that's the key. been the issue. Yeah. In fact, there was a move on a few years ago by the NCAA to reduce the number of Division II scholarships from 36 to 24 because that's of the, the dollars that these schools had to, to come up with. Virginia Union has 24 or 25, so it, a lot of those schools fall in line with that, and they can't get those 11 or 12 extra scholarships, depending on how many that is, and they're competing against those teams that have those full scholarships. No question about it. Uh, you know, programs such as Grand Valley, they are able to support fully funded programs, and that's one of the reasons they're always a, a player on the national scene, and they're right in there right now. Well, this Virginia Union team, what, they're going to have three guys that are seniors that are leaving. And only, only one is on his full scholarship. Yes, yeah, so and that's they're, Illahoo. They're losing, right. you know, <laughs> what, yeah. one and a half, two, yeah. you know, yeah, because the way they have well, to. Well, Illahoo is only, uh, Smith, Illahoo Smith is the only one on full scholarship. But the bottom line is. So they only is, have one yeah. more they're going to get no full scholarship <laughs> for next year. I mean. <laughs> yeah, it, it makes it difficult for those administrators. And I think a lot of that falls on the athletic director and the presidents of the schools of what they're going to do and what kind of funding they're going to put in the football. You know, he's talking about Grand Valley. They are the two-time defending Division II champs, and they're playing Central Washington today. They'll play the winner of the Shadron State Northwest Missouri State game in the semifinals next week, and that was the championship matchup a year ago. But uh, there'll be a new player in the championship game this, this year. This one bounces off. And it may not, still may not be picked up, and it still may wind up being Tuskegee's ball. It is at the five yard line. At the five yard line. Donaldson had problems picking the ball up. Never could get possession of it. And finally recovered after a good special teams play by Tuskegee. That's the third turnover of the ball game for. Virginia you, Union. Charlie, you're taught here, get down on the football. Do not try to pick it up. And that's the problem there. You, you fall on it. <laughs> you know, everyone on the sideline is telling them that. Everybody, just fall on the football. Don't add insult to injury. So, just a minute and 22 seconds, four seconds ago, Tuskegee scored their last touchdown. They have the ball first and goal down the five here, turning the corners. And is Forney, and Forney's in for a touchdown. Charlie, that was an awful tackle by LeVon Hyatt. I mean, number one out there, you got to make that tackle or slow him down. I mean, he just completely missed. It was not a very good tackle. Forney with the run. When you're coming outside in, inside out, you've got to stop the stop the running back there. See, and he, I mean, that's a complete wolf. Whiff. Now for the point after once again is Matt Sims. Only 13 seconds between the two touchdowns for Tuskegee. Fitzhugh scored with 122 left on the clock. 109 left now, and Forney is in the end zone, and they're going for their 50th point of the ball game. It's up. And it is good. 50 to 24 after being down 17 to nothing. And that's only the third time this year that they've hit the 50 point mark. They scored 51 <laughs> against Clark Atlanta. Charlie, hold on. All the fans are looking up here to tell them they need to put another point on the scoreboard. <laughs> it's 50 to 24. The scoreboard has 49 24. And we're getting people looking at us like. We're doing it. <laughs> well, I'm sure the scoreboard people. Nine seconds, one play, five yards. Forney with the five-yard run. But this is the third time they've hit 50-point mark this year. Now, look, look at the cameraman. Almost getting hit. Oh, <laughs> danger while working. Right. Remember <laughs> that in the Thanksgiving Day game against Alabama State, at the end of regulation, the score was 44-44. Uh -huh. So those other 20 points that they scored were in the three overtimes. Yeah, I don't like the overtime system the way it's set up either. Well, yeah. you want the NFL system? No, I want something where you give them more. It more, makes it more difficult. Not the 25. No, not you the 25. You want to move it like maybe to 40. Yeah, I like the 40. I, I don't like how it's set up now. Too easy to get 
points. I yeah. mean, if you don't get anything, you kick a field yeah, goal, 25 right? 25 yards is easy in college football. The way spread offenses are now and how you can get down the field that quickly. I mean, we saw it in the first half with Virginia Union. Two 70-plus yard touchdowns. This time, the ball will be run out. And Cunningham out to the 30. First down and 10 now Virginia Union which just gave up two touchdowns in 13 seconds because of a muff three turnovers today a fumble a safety which you could call a turnover if you want to plus an interception and then the muff on the kickoff return. See and if you're Virginia Union you don't want to be in this position because your running game already is struggling and now you have to resort to just passing strictly passing and as good as Lamar Little is this is not where you want him to be and we haven't even hit the fourth quarter yet still a minute to go we're getting close back to pass and this one is complete first down is gained across the 40 to the 41 yard line Charlie the biggest difference now too is you're seeing all 11 players for Tuskegee converging on the ball even if they don't all get there they are, you know, Reginald Ruffin, the defensive coordinator, talked a lot about it. He said, we're just blue-collar guys, and we out, out working, out hustling. That first quarter, they didn't show up. But now they're clearly playing like the blue-collar, lunch pail guys that he wants to have. You saw a shot of Michael Hampton, three catches in the first half, 170-plus yards and two touchdowns on two long plays. Flushed out of the pocket, and the quarterback, Lamar Little, is going to go down led by Jonathan Hall. See this is another area where they struggle. I'm talking about the offensive line for Virginia Union with all the changes in personnel inside and moving guys around to play a good Tuskegee team that can just pin their ears back now and come after you. It makes it tough. When you look at number 70 David Mims he's six foot eight. 330 pounds. I mean, there he is. He had a touchdown return for it early in the season. Yeah, he ran the ball in. Two yards. Yeah. <laughs> he yeah. wanted. He told coach he should have some plays in the playbook. He, he, want, he wanted to be like the refrigerator, huh? <laughs> <laughs> William Perry. He really hadn't filled out even down low yet. Yeah. Big He's guy. Six, six foot eight, 330 pounder. Right now, 50 to 24, Tuskegee. ESPNU Coaches Spotlight Tuesdays at one, only on ESPNU. You give a little love and it all comes back to you. You're gonna be remembered for the things that you say and do. Hi, it's Vince with Sham Wow. You'll be saying wow every time you use this towel. It's like a chamois, it's like a towel, it's like a sponge. A regular towel doesn't work wet. This works wet or dry. This is for the house, the car, the boat, the RV. Sham Wow holds 20 times its weight in liquid. Look at this. It just does the work. Why do you want to work twice as hard? Doesn't drip. Doesn't make a mess. Wring it out. You wash it in the washing machine. Made in Germany. You know the Germans always make good stuff. You can cut it in half. Use one as a bath mat. Drain your dishes with the other one. Use one as a towel. Olympic divers. They use it as a towel. Look at that. Completely dry. Put a wet sweater. Roll it up. It dries your sweaters. Here's some cola. Wine, coffee, cola, pet stains. Not only is the damage going to be on top. There's your mildew. That is going to smell. See that? The most of We're going to do this in real time. Look at this. Put on the spill. Turn it over. Without even putting any pressure, 50% of the cola right there you follow me camera guy the other 50 percent the color starts to come up no other towel is going to do that it acts like a vacuum and look at this virtually dry on the bottom see what i'm telling you sham wow you'll be saying wow every time i can't live without it i just love it oh my gosh i don't even buy paper towels anymore if you're going to wash your cars or any kind of vehicle you'd be out of your mind not to own one of these all i can say is sham wow you're going to spend $20 every month on paper towels anyway. You're throwing your money away. The mini sham wows are for everything, for everyday use. This lasts 10 years. This lasts a week. I don't know. It sells itself. The sham wow sells for $19.95, but you get one for the house, one for the car, two for the kitchen and bathroom. But if you call now, within the next 20 minutes, because we can't do this all day, we'll give you a second set absolutely free. So that's eight sham wows for $19.95. It comes with a 10-year warranty. 
Here's how to order. Call 1-800-951-4570. That's 1-800-951-4570. ShamWow is not available in stores. Call 1-800-951-4570. That's 1-800-951-4570. Call now. Six point ball game we have here. Tuskegee trying to go 12 and 0 for the season. They did it back in 2000 under Rick Comages, who's now the head coach at Jackson State. And they're getting ready. That is uh, the Jackson State Tigers to play Grambling in the SWAC championship December 15th down among uh, uh, Birmingham, Alabama. That game will be played. Here's Lamar Little walking off the left side, cutting back inside. Good feet. Still on his feet and has. Yardage up to the 49 yard line before Jason Stanley, freshman out of Ellenwood, Georgia, Creekside High, true freshman, made the stop. One thing you can't do with Lamar Little is relax and think, hey, we got the game in control because with his feet, he can get him back in. As long on the year on the ground, 46 yards, but he has that ability. <laughs> Strike from anywhere on the field, and if, if you do not get him in that first wave he, he just keeps going to the second level and third level and makes a lot of people miss and it is third down now facing Virginia Union third down and about four long four under pressure lets it go as a receiver out there this is intercepted by Tuskegee another turnover it's Frank Williams the senior out of Columbus, Georgia, who comes up with it, his third interception of the year. He blocked the point after touchdown against Alabama State, returned it for a two-point conversion, the INT today. Well, once again, that pressure up the middle doesn't allow Lamar Little to throw the football down. Jason Stanley beats Maurice Tolliver, and then on the back end. See, normally when you have pressure on the front end, something bad or not a completion happens on the back end, and it showed right there. Frank Williams with a nice interception. Here he is out of Columbus, Georgia, psychology major, and the ball goes over on downs. A good play by Frank Williams, who they also call Gene Williams. Yeah. <laughs> Well, they, put, they got Frank Gene and Gene Frank. I don't know. Wide open is English. English drops it. Got a good hand in there from the defensive back down there. LeVon Hyatt. Hyatt got his hand in at the last minute because English was headed for the end zone. Jason English knows he should have had that one. What a game he and performance he pulled off in the Turkey Day Classic against Alabama State. Let's go to Lowell in the studio. Well, first off, tell Charles to look away because we got USC and UCLA. Joe McKnight opening up the score with a short touchdown run. Just like that, Trojans take the seven-zip lead. I'm sorry, Charles. I'm sorry. I had to do it. Hey, it <laughs> happened to you with Texas last week, Lowell. Don't get on me. <laughs> <laughs> And the pass out in the flat. You know, Lowell is a, a Texas Longhorn alumni. You know, he got he's he's taking it on the chin last week, and he was telling me all week how UCLA was not going to match up with SC, and I, I agree with him. <laughs> you agree? Yeah, they, this year is going to be tough. They have to have a, a, a heck of a game to play against USC. They're playing. Is their coach in trouble? I think he is. I think he is. I hate to say that, but I think he is. They win over Southern Cal today, and then he saves his job. I think he does. Yeah, Hurley Hemphill. A little shaken up on you the know, play. He was hurt a couple plays ago, and I'll talk about it when we come back. There's a timeout on the field while they attend to Hurley Hemphill down on the field. We'll be back in a moment. 
You've heard the legendary Tuskegee story. Today at Tuskegee University, students learn to fly, grow food for NASA, develop space-age materials, design affordable sound homes, and help improve education in Alabama schools. Students earn degrees from bachelor's to Ph.D. level, becoming engineers, veterinarians, nurses, teachers, scientists, business professionals, and artists. Tuskegee University students enjoy modern residential living along with high-tech research facilities. Call 1-800-622-6531 or go online at tuskegee.edu. They say a man should always dress for the job he wants. So why am I dressed up like a pirate in this restaurant? It's all because some hacker stole my identity. Now I'm in here every evening serving chowder and iced tea. Should have gone to FreeCreditReport.com. I could have seen this coming at me like an atom bomb. They monitor your credit and send you email alerts. So you don't end up selling fish to tourists in t-shirts. Offer applies with enrollment and triple advantage. College football's heroes of the past welcome a new member to their exclusive club. Saturday, one college football player will transcend greatness and become a legend. Will Florida's record-setting superhero emerge from a wide-open field? Missouri's gutty leader with the golden arm? Or could it be another of the talented contenders with the jaw-dropping numbers? The Heisman Trophy presentation presented by Nissan, Saturday at 8 on ESPN, followed by Bull Mania. Autumn, and so the competition returns, and with it, the chance to play without limits. Bound only by will, the commitment is your choice. A championship, a record, or even a new approach. They all begin with a simple pledge. The bigger the goal, the stronger the team. A new season is calling. The NCAA Fall Championships on ESPN, ESPN2, and ESPNU. Here in the fourth quarter, they're tending to Hurley Hemfield on the sideline. He's off, and it's third down for Tuskegee right now. Let's see what Jakari Atkinson has up his sleeve and trying to convert the third down. His team leading by 26. The option, the left side going to Freeman, and Freeman will be very close to a first down as he's run out of bounds at about the 17-yard line. He had to get to the 18 for the first down. And you'll see the injury to Hemp Hill comes in on the tail end and just goes limp after the hit. But a few plays before, or the series before, Stevie Johnson came and hit him when he was on the bottom of the pile making a tackle. And that might have been the start of some of the problems that he's had. So as a yard shy of a first down, that means the punting unit will come on. And we we're talking about some of the coaching changes just in the HBCU. There are two openings here in the SIC as this is a quick kick here by Jonathan Lisa Lisa what the good wide receiver <laughs> no he, he tried to catch again Virginia Union changing personnel as they were bringing in the special teams punt defense unit and he tried to get it off but like you said was not a good punt he punted from the 17 the ball dies at the 38. What is that, 21 yards? Short field is what I call it. 21-yard <laughs> punt. Yeah. Ooh, that was bad. So now Virginia Union will start at the Tuskegee 38-yard line. I was talking about coaching changes in the SIC. Johnny Cole, who was at Lane College, has been named the head coach at Texas Southern, replacing Steve Wilson. I understand there's a change of coaches at Miles College in, in Birmingham, Alabama. First down and 10. In the SWAC, there were three coaching vacancies. Right now, there's just one. Here's a pass. And this one is knocked down. It's incomplete. Stephen Miller, the intended receiver, Tuskegee's defense, has been big all year, and today was no exception. Justin Hanna defending that time. Oh, when you look at coming off, Jarvis Devon was the key guy making that initial wave of folks coming after you. Jeremy Obi with the interception, and then another interception here with a nice, that was a nice catch by Frank Williams, by the way. <laughs> it certainly was, but, second down. But really now attacking. That's what that defense had to do. The first quarter, they didn't show up, and then guys with the right uniforms came back out in the second quarter and they've been playing very well ever since second down and ten 
Little throwing across his body. Steven Miller with the catch right at about the five yard line. And it'll be first and goal. They'll mark it at the six. Steven Miller had to reach back and get that one. It just got over the outstretched hands of the defensive back down there. And Miller was able to bring it in for first down. Don't sleep on this junior out of Cander, North Carolina, Lamar Little. That's a 33 yard pass completion. And he is, you, you, the minute you start thinking, <laughs> you got them all wrapped up. And if you're Tuskegee, you got to keep on the, the pedal. You can't back up here now because they can score. And you don't want to be in a situation like you were last week where you're playing <laughs> triple overtime. Right. Well, they gave up two touchdowns against Alabama State in the last few minutes of the ball game, including one with 27 seconds to go to send the game in overtime. But here's Little being sacked all the way back to the 20-yard line. And coming in was Jonathan Harris out of Mays High in Atlanta. Here is the team's leading tackler at, from the strong safety well, watch, position. Watch Jason Stanley also. Very good job of getting off, and he's going to be upset. You know what? He misses the sack. Yeah. That would have been his uh, one, his first one on the year. He's got a half a sack, Jason Stanley. He's upset. But Jonathan Harris? That's he's his not. second. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's hot. Yeah. yeah. He's fastest. on the track and field team. He's the fastest kid on the team. And yeah. Runs a four by 100 uh, meter relay team. Missed the old six season because of an injury. And here's a pass into the end zone. This one's going to be incomplete. Intending it for Philip Taylor on the far side. There he is, Philip, out of Centerville, Virginia. Just celebrated his 22nd birthday yesterday, and he would like to have brought that in for part of his birthday celebration. <laughs> well, that was good coverage by Gene Wood, Frank Williams. And I tell you, the, the, the thing you're talking about, Charlie, with speed, that's the one reason why this Tuskegee team is, is so good. They've got great team speed on defense. You look at Frank Williams, Jonathan Harris, and even Jarvis Devon, that quick first step to, that allows him to get into that backfield and create some havoc. This is third down and goal. But they're snapping it at the 18-yard line. Here it is. Touchdown. And it's Stephen Miller. Now the problem when you go and you blitz and you have man coverage, you got to stay close to your man. So Stephen Miller, five touchdowns coming into this game on a receiving end. Make this number six. They're bringing pressure, but you let that guy get behind you. You can't do that when you're blitzing. You got to have, you got to be hugged up in coverage. Not a very good job right there. Covering. Actually, that's the second touchdown reception of the day for Miller. Fourth touchdown pass thrown. By the and this extra point is blocked. You need to fall on it. <laughs> yeah, Cedric Ivory was the man in cover. And he's a strong safety, so he was not in a position that the cornerback needs to be. You got to play better. Four touchdown passes by Little, two going to Miller. The Division II student athlete experience emphasizes academic and athletic excellence. From Olympic style sports festival championships to community focused partnerships, Division II schools are moving forward with a new attitude. Learning, service, passion, sportsmanship, resourcefulness, and balance. These are the attributes of student athletes, coaches, administrators, and alumni and fans who say with pride, I chose Division II. This is real life couple, Beth and Mark, who were matched on eHarmony.com. It seemed to me that all the other sites was pretty much just the same as like going trolling at the bar, except you were in your own house. Why did they choose eHarmony after trying other sites? That was the one site that people were very serious about finding their mate. She was pretty and beautiful smile and you know, everything I was looking for. Discover what Beth and Mark found. Log on today and review your matches for free. Get your weekly dose of NFL news and analysis from Boomer and the Gang. Sunday NFL Countdown, 11 a.m. on ESPN. What are you being... When you put up a fat head, you're making a statement too big for words. A statement like this. <laughs> Maybe you need something more. How about the NFL, NBA, MLB, NASCAR? If you can think of a sports-related acronym, we've probably got a fat head for you. 
The biggest names and moments captured at the height of intensity, plucked from the playing field like ripened fruit that can smack you in your ear hole. Nice work, fellas. Hall of Famers, ex-gamers, QB sackers, revitalized packers, I'm starting to rhyme and I like it. Fathead, a passion that's been building and building, so put it in your building. Get your favorite fatheads from the NFL, plus MLB, NBA, NASCAR, and more. For a limited time, buy one and get half off the second at fathead.com. You're here at the Pioneer Bowl looking at Virginia Union down, but just scored a touchdown on Tuskegee. And when you have man coverage, you've got to be in position. Stephen Miller clearly on this corner route is able to get open on Cedric Ivory. And then on the back end of that, <laughs> your coach is going to tell you, you got to play better than that when I call a certain coverage. Reginald Ruffin was all over Cedric Ivory. Tough love, I like to call that. And we have a 20-point ball game. Four touchdown passes by Little, two to Hampton, and two to Miller so far this afternoon. And here's the return by Antoine Mitchell. Mitchell up the sideline, and Mitchell finally run out of bounds on the far side right in front of the Virginia Union bench, but a good return. And college basketball continues tonight. Three games following our game, Michigan faces Harvard. 7.30, Ohio State takes on Butler. And then at 9.30, Indiana, led by Eric Gordon, the freshman, meets Southern Illinois. It's college basketball presented by City, part of the Jimmy V Week, right here on ESPNU. For more information, log on to ESPNU.com. Charlie Neals, Charles R. Buckle, and Pioneer Bowl 10 is where we are. The CIAA against the SIAC. Preseason polls, Virginia Union was picked number three. They finished number one in the Eastern Division. After that 33-yard return, good field position for Tuskegee. High pass on the far sideline, and now trying to reverse the field and come back the opposite way. But to no avail is Lorenzo Crawford. Crawford stopped by Arrington. I call these panic plays because you kind of panic as a receiver. You get caught and you say, okay, and your coaches always tell you, don't go back in there, son. And he sees like four or five white colored jerseys and he's thinking, I got to, where am I going to go? He thinks he's Reggie Bush. <laughs> <laughs> he panicked on that one because if he just cuts it up, he's going to get some yards. Yeah. Losses are back across midfield at a 47 yard line. We had to be second down and a lot of real estate to go. Again, Atkinson wants to go to the air. Swing pass out of the backfield of Freeman. Freeman inside and down to the 40-yard line goes Stephen Freeman. Stevie Johnson runs him down. Sophomore out of, out of Homewood, Alabama. Charlie, that was a very nice throw by Jakari Atkinson. Nice and but, easy. But on the back end of it, watch here. It just kind of floats it up there like a point guard dropping a dime. And watch this move here. Just real good ability to get by. Stephen Freeman has shown when he's gotten in the game a good ability. He's averaging 6.8 yards a carry. Got to make those tackles. And his third down and three. The handoff. And they're not going to get it. Maybe a yard is all is picked up there as Stephen Freeman got the carry. And Stephen to make that Reginald Smalls was there to make the stop. You know who's been quiet this half is Brandon Smith. We were yes, calling his name a lot, and they've started to neutralize his speed. Remember, Reginald Smalls went out early with an injury, and uh, he politicked his way back. Yeah, in the he's game. back into the lineup. <laughs> so fourth down, facing the the Tigers, Golden Tigers of Tuskegee University. You're talking about the preseason polls in the SIAC. Tuskegee, I believe, was picked to finish second behind uh, Albany State. And uh, they wound up number one. Albany State wound up second. If you look at Arrington Jones on the sideline. Fort Valley, third. Morehouse finished fourth. And that may have been the biggest surprise. I thought that uh, Rich Freeman in his first year did a fantastic job at Morehouse. Well, that, what did that tell you? Absolutely nothing. Preseason polls, right. <laughs> all of those things, you know, preseason standings and rankings, 
it's really for the riders to say this is where we think you're going to fall. But injuries, the way things shake out, guys step up for you you don't expect always happens on yep. any level of football. Morehouse was picked to finish last in the SIC in the preseason polls. They wound up number four. They wound up with a record of seven and three. And like I said, they were three and eight a year ago. Mm -hmm. And Rich Freeman in his first year as the head coach did a fantastic job. Of course, Mike White always does a great job over at Albany State. Uh, DeAndre Clark over at Fort Valley. And of course, Stan Connors in his first year here after being an assistant at Alabama A&M at Benedict College where this game is being played on the campus. Over in the CIAA, Shaw University, who won the West and won it all, was picked to finish fourth in the Western Division. <laughs> Darrell Asbury, their coach at Shaw, the Bears. And here's a pitch to the right side to Forney. Forney cannot get around the corner. They went for it on fourth down, and they're turned back on downs. Good defensive play by the Panthers of Virginia Union. Niles Rainey was there. There he is, number two out of College Park, Georgia. Creekside High. Well, and I think the other thing, Jakari Atkinson wanted to take this ball a little bit longer. Watch, he's going down. He pitched it way too soon for what he wanted to do. And then you can see Niles Rainey and Brandon Smith. We just talked about Brandon Smith stepping up. Made a nice play there. But Atkinson wanted to take that a step further or maybe even turn it up the field himself if he could have. So from the 41, their own 41 with 8.35 to go, trailing by 20 points. It's a three-possession ball game right now for Virginia Union. Here's a quarterback, Little. Turns the corner and out of bounds in front of the, and a late flag is coming down. Jonathan Harris with the, the horse collar, as you might call it. There's not such a penalty in the NFL, but I think they do get him for the hit out of bounds. Very close to the first down. He's over there laughing with his coach, <laughs> Harrington Jones. It's going to be, you know, Jonathan Harris. You talk about that speed. Yeah, he's going he's to bring him down, but continue to take him down even after he's out of bounds. Way See, that's out. why I don't know yeah. if that's a good penalty. I mean, he was on yeah. on him before he got to the sideline. That's a, that's a that's a hustle effort penalty, but with the way the game has gone, Tuskegee has struggled on their last two drives, and Virginia Union now is starting to pick it back up again. They score here. It's 50 to 37. At the 34-yard line of Tuskegee, Virginia Union with the ball right now. Marquise Davis, the fullback in motion. Flags are down, and we may have offsides against offside. Tuskegee. And a penalty marker is down. That pass complete to Terrence Cunningham, the junior out of Pageland, South Carolina. Van McLeod, 42, was offsides. He's going to come out of the game now. They're bringing in Brandon Anderson. But it, it's, it's those kind of penalties, Charlie, that this Tuskegee team the last few weeks, they haven't finished ball games. Yeah. <laughs> You're talking about the CIAA and the Eastern Division. Bowie State probably had the most disappointing year. Mike Lynn had to be disappointed. They were picked to finish second in the conference. And as far as the East was concerned, they wound up fifth in last place. But it was a good year for Willard Bailey and the Tigers of St. Paul. College, you know, they had dropped football back in 83 and they just revived it a couple of years ago and they came back that St. Paul's team and finished third place with a five and five overall record. Uh, you can, you can Willard Bailey used to be the coach yeah. at Virginia Union. He was here for a couple of years, uh, a couple of stints, I should say, for a number of years, but uh, two two time coach at Virginia Union. Of course, Joe Taylor, who's the Hampton University coach, also coached here at Virginia Union. And of course, we know Rick Comages was the coach at Tuskegee when they were going through a lot of their championships, black national championships, so forth and so on. They're going to mark it from the original line of scrimmage now. And they're going to get uh, first and five is what it's going to be rather than second and two or three. Get the down back as opposed to getting the yards that you gain on that free play, so to speak. So it's first down and five now for Virginia Union. Davis in motion. Little. 
Under pressure. And coming up immediately to make the stop was Jason Stanley. He wasn't going to let that sack get away. No, number 45 was right there. Freshman out of Ellenwood, Georgia. Went to Creekside High. He was on a high school team that uh, won the regional 2-4-8 title up in uh, Georgia. They advanced to the third round of the playoffs. In fact, he had 99 tackles, 21 for loss, 17 sacks, and an interception well, in his senior year. He asked Lamar Little, is it paper or plastic for the sack? <laughs> I'm taking home with me. Paper or plastic. <laughs> And here we go again. This time it's Devon. Jarvis Devon with the stop. Well, when it was well we know he hasn't been in the witness protection program. <laughs> exactly. And think about this, though. They took that penalty and made it first down. And ever since then, they've gone back. Backward. Yeah, they had. They gave up the yards to get the downs. Now it's third and 13. And they're back past the original line of scrimmage where they started. Third and 13 is what they're facing right now. And we're in the fourth quarter, 7.05 to go. Pressure. Here it goes. He finally gets it off. It's caught. Somehow, Stephen Miller made no the catch. catch. Great catch by Stephen Miller. And the officials all confer and say it was a catch right at the 15-yard line. He was covered by Ivory once again. Well, Lamar, How he held on, I'll never know. Well, Lamar Little is getting ready to take a shot right there. Just as he lets the ball Devon, go. And the ball is tipped on the way to Miller. Miller comes up with it. Yeah, now, once, once again, you're going to see 55 right there with the ball right off his hands. That's Jonathan Hall. <laughs> See, they're, they're saying that maybe the ball hit the ground, but the officials are saying it is a catch. And it's Stephen Miller, 22 yards on the reception. And he's come up big here late. That was a big third down play and a big time throw by Lamar Little. This game is far from over, Charlie. The way Tuskegee has played in the second half, they have not played well his last two drives. Here we're going into the end zone, and it's incomplete intended for Phillip Taylor. Good breakup by Justin Hanna. Now you think when you go back to the time that Tuskegee scored, then they muff, that is Virginia Union, the ensuing kickoff. They give up two touchdowns in a 13 second span. Mm -hmm. That probably hurt them more than anything in this yeah, game. Yeah, it did because, you know, just looking at them, they had opportunities, Virginia Union. They let it get, let it get away. And that one, they, you know, with Torrey and Donaldson not just falling on the football gave you quick points <laughs> don't forget college basketball presented by city michigan and harvard coming up next following our game here here's a pass out in the flat complete to Ilya smith he breaks a tackle at the five and out of bounds inside the five at the well they're going to mark it right at the five they say he stepped out at the five and that should be enough for first and goal for Virginia Union, Elihu Smith. Elihu Smith with a nice run. I mean, he kept his legs driving. Henry Turner had a chance to bring him down. He's been nicked up. He keeps coming out in and out of the lineup. There's something wrong with his ankle or lower leg. Elihu Smith, fourth straight year starting. History major, wants to be a teacher after his collegiate career from Glassboro, New Jersey. 1900 career rushing yards coming into today's game and 24 career receptions. He's there in the eye formation. Marquise Davis is the up back. Cunningham is the man in motion. And they give it to Donaldson. Donaldson's in the lineup and he gets back to the line of scrimmage and that's it. Elihu Smith, like I said, had gone out something wrong with his lower leg and he's been going in and out of the lineup so Torian Donaldson the change of pace back speed back they have and I'm not taking anything away from Elio Smith but Torian Donaldson every time he touches the football you know he has a chance to to yeah. really be explosive second championship that is the Pioneer Bowl for the Virginia Union Panthers they played in nine CIAA championship games CIAA has only won two of these games as Cunningham goes in motion. And there's some running room over there for the quarterback. He really lets it go. 
trying to hit Philip Taylor again in the back of the end zone. Don't forget, stay with us following this one. Michigan and Harvard. Both teams kind of struggling early on, three and four, as far as their records are concerned, but they're coming on right after our game here. As you look at Arrington Jones, the third, head coach of the Panthers of Virginia Union, taking the game to the team, that is, to the championship game. You know, he came in, he was an assistant of Virginia State and at Winston-Salem for three years, Virginia State. In fact, he had a record of five and 15 his first two years. He was 16 and five his last two years. So he did a pretty good job of turning things around. Yeah, he's not gonna be happy with Stephen Miller on this play. See, these are, this is the area where you can't give up those yards. You can't get penalty yards down here. Not, not when you're facing a third down and goal. And when you're down by 20 points, so it's still going to be third and goal, but the ball is going to be moved back to the 10. Sometimes people say you may have a little more room to work in terms of the passing game a little further out from the goal line. Sometimes you do, but I think once you start getting these negative plays, they manifest, and sometimes you see another negative play happen. Just what I'm talking about. Yeah. You get the, you feel the rhythm of the offense walking back to the huddle saying, man, we were so close. Henry Turner was there, and nobody blocked him up the middle. This is where they've struggled inside. They've really not done a good job on pass pro. 66, Ma Maurice Tolliver looks like he's responsible. He slides down, and you get a free rusher up the middle, Henry Tolliver. Remember, Henry Turner, excuse me. remember, this was a first and goal at the five. It's fourth and goal at the 22. So they've lost 17 yards. College basketball presented by City. Following our Pioneer Bowl game here on ESPNU, it'll be Michigan against Harvard. You know, Charlie, and you mentioned, you know, having an opportunity to get better field and field position, but this offense is trying to score. They're in such a hole that any negative play seems to just kind of make everybody else say, man, why can't we get it done? <laughs> and that was a prime example. And I think the, the biggest thing when they look at this Virginia Union, they'll say we had our opportunities, but we also had some very bad plays inside. Our offensive line didn't do the right thing, didn't pick up the right blitzes. And I think that ultimately hurts them. Now, if they come up and make a huge play here, they're right back in the ball game. But I think all those negative plays are going to really compound and Torrey and Donaldson, the fumble, all of those things you look at will hurt them and they'll, they'll look back at, at that. Fourth down. Nine of 17 throughout the year in fourth down conversion. 53% here is the pressure thrown into the end zone. Court touchdown. Philip Taylor. Boy, he's talking about <laughs> pulling a Houdini trick. <laughs> well, Van McLeod should have been there on Taylor. He had him. I mean, little, excuse me. But that was a great job by Taylor uh, keeping the ball alive. And once again, you got defenders back there that don't make a play on the football. So a 22-yard touchdown pass. And Little, his fifth touchdown pass he's thrown today to three different receivers. This is the first catch for a touchdown by Phillip Taylor. Two went to Hampton, two to Miller, and this one to Taylor. And the point after is good. So on a fourth and goal from the 22, Little pulls some magic. 442 remaining. 13-point ball game. After more than 90 years, the Southern Intercollegiate Athletic Conference is still flying high as a steward for academic and athletic excellence. The conference is comprised of 12 full member institutions and one provisional member and offers 13 men and women's varsity sports. SIAC student athletes and coaches always try to reach for the pinnacle of collegiate excellence to be named national champions. Join us as we witness history in the making. At Dick's Sporting Goods, we've got gifts for 
sports. Like tailor-made drivers and Titleist golf balls. Outerwear for the whole family from the North Bay. Plus new styles of Under Armour fleece and cold gear. And a great selection of fitness equipment. We have gifts for the outdoor enthusiasts like GPS systems. And Coleman road trip grills. Or come see our selection of Crocs. And basketball shoes. Plus table games. And fathead wall graphics. If you're not sure what to give, pick up a holiday gift. It's been a game of streaks. 17 points unanswered by Virginia Union to start it off. Then 36 unanswered points by the Tuskegee Tigers. And then after they took a 50 to 24 lead, it's been a 13 point swing for Virginia Union, who just got the ball back, I believe. It looks like they, they did. did. They got the onside kick. It hit, it was actually. Fielded by one of the Tuskegee up men at the 40-yard line. It was Andrew Bailey. It and like. it went off of his hands, and there was a bunch of white jerseys around it. So maybe a break here. And now at the 37, 38-yard line is where, here it is. Here's the kick. Andrew Bailey out there, oh, number 18. Goes right off of his hands. Yeah. And who's there? Nothing but white jerseys. So hold on to your seats and your hats and your plane tickets. <laughs> At the 37-yard line, Virginia Union with 4.41 to go. They have the ball. First down and 10, trailing by 13 points. Marquise Davis in motion. Here's the pass. Incomplete. Trying to get Philip Taylor, and we're going to get a late flag that's coming in way, way late. I don't know about this one. What do you say, think, Charles? I'm say Andrew Bailey. You don't think so? No, I don't think so. I thought they were both going he, for the ball. I thought he was making a play on the football. Yeah, it's a 15-yard penalty. Let's see if they get this one right. Don't forget, coming up next, Michigan and Harvard. Basketball coming your way right here. On ESPNU, 15-yard penalty. The biggest problem, though, even if it's not a penalty or, or if it is, I mean, whatever we think is not important. But I, I tell you, the, the one thing that it, you look at is that they can't play man or cover two. That, that they're struggling to find out how to stop Lamar Little, and he's picking them apart. And this is a team that came up with only six interceptions all season long. That is, Tuskegee, you had to know with the points they were putting up, a lot of teams threw the ball on them because they were playing good defense. They were scoring a lot of points on people. Here's Little taking off down the left side, has the first down, and finally run out of bounds in front of his own sideline by Turner, but not before he gets the first down and he sets his blocks up through. Uh, Beautifully. He really does. And I think the, the one thing they've been able to turn the ball over interception wise, but not fumble recovery. And, and little also is able to pick out people and say, here, you go there and you go there. <laughs> he makes it easy to pick his way through there. This Tuskegee team now on their heels. And when you turn it off and then try to turn it on, sometimes you can't find it. At the 34-yard line of Tuskegee, Union with the ball. And here's the ball going in the air, incomplete. On the far sideline, there were two receivers in the vicinity, Hampton being one of the receivers. He has a pair of touchdowns already, and Philip Taylor was the other. College basketball presented by City coming up right after our game. We have 420 remaining in this contest in a 13-point game. There's the 10th edition of the Pioneer Bowl between the CIAA representative, which is Virginia Union, and the SIC representative, Tuskegee University. They came into the game, Tuskegee, 11-0. Second down and 10. Lamar Little going to the air. Has a man open on the far sideline and had the first down yards but tried to get too much out of it and wound up being turned back. Jonathan Harris on the tackle of Terrence Cunningham. You know, once again, you, you, they're making plays, Virginia Union, and Tuskegee is so far back that I thought he was clearly going to get a first down. Right. He yeah, started, was, I think he started jitterbugging yeah. there, and he, he just went straight ahead. He'd have had the first down. 
It is third down and again little operating with an empty backfield trips receivers to the right side and a little pressure coming on him and he lets it go and it's off the hands of the intended receiver good defense downfield by Jonathan Harris again Cunningham the intended receiver looks like it just hits him in the face he might have hit the face mask and bounced <laughs> off yeah that happens every now and then <laughs> Cunningham, a 5'8 junior from Pageland, South Carolina. Fourth and two now. Remember the last time they had a fourth and goal from the 22, they scored a touchdown. All they need is two yards to keep the chains moving and keep the drive alive. Now we have movement. See, Big drop. number 70, David Mims, the 6'8 guy, got out of his stance too soon. Well, drop passes, all of those things. But last time we said that they scored a touchdown. So maybe they need more <laughs> yards. Maybe they need to move backwards to go forward. Yeah, they don't need, you don't want fourth and eight when you're seven when you could have fourth and two. <laughs> <laughs> but the way this team is played, it's almost like they want to be in a deficit mode to try to come back. They're challenged. <laughs> They're yard challenged. Yeah. <laughs> Get opportunities and give them away. Here we go. They converted the last fourth down time. The last time they had a fourth down situation, their last possession. Here it is again. And that was interference. If I th now that was interference. I saw that. Now I felt that yeah. that was an interference. Cedric penalty. Ivory yeah. clearly was holding them on. Oh, Stephen that Miller. Yeah, <laughs> that was interference. I had no no problem with that flag. <laughs> Gonna watch 18, and once again, Lamar Little is gonna feel the pressure. Get it off right before. See the yeah, he's holding. There's him. already contact. Yeah, and he had his hand. I don't know if that one is bad. Was as bad as the other one. But the other problem with that is this is the same guy that did not get the uh, onside kick. Yeah, and plus he had uh, two two penalties on him this year. This this. Uh, this drive. That's two penalties on him on this drive. Yeah, that, Plus that the one, onside. To me, when I saw that on the second replay, that didn't look as bad as the first time. The first uh, interference call on it. But first down. Yeah, that's all that matters for Virginia Union. Four receivers left side. They're looking like they're trying to set up a screen over there. And they do have it complete on the far side to Cunningham. Down the sideline. And Cunningham is in the end zone. Touchdown. Cedric Ivory made this this was not his drive. He didn't get the onside kick. He had two pass interference penalties and he just made a major whiff on the tackle that allowed Cunningham to go down the sideline for six. And what they did is they spread him out. Forced him to go into a situation where they have to respect down the field and just a short throw and a long run. 22 yard touchdown pass. Six touchdown pass of the afternoon for Lamar Little. And here's the point after. 50 to 43. Well, a seven point game with 318 to go. And we talked about the game of streaks. It's been what's 20 <laughs> unanswered points by Virginia Union after they were down 50 to 24. Well, and you're gonna see here. Lamar Little looks down the field and it comes down underneath and no one there but Cedric Ivory and he almost like he's playing two hand touch. He was not in position. Cunningham does a does a good job of evading him and that's a nice throw and good with his eyes. Lamar Little was of looking down the field forcing the defense to think deep and then come underneath 63 yard drive now. You go back to a couple of plays, you have a missed field goal and a missed extra point by Virginia Union. That's four points right there. Yep. Now you, you take that away. That's a three. We got a three point ball game. Now you got a field goal away from tying it. Well, but you know, if if, if was that, you know, <laughs> it, it, the problem for this now, when you look at this game, is that Tuskegee is letting it get away from him. And you know Virginia Union is going to do another onside kick. You better get somebody over there if you're Tuskegee that can catch the football. That's not afraid to put it away. Because if you do, give it up. 
Virginia Union is going to score. The way they're playing, they're going to score another touchdown. Well, and the other strategy for Virginia Union is you got to keep the ball out of the hands of Jakari Atkinson. Exactly. And that's they, the most important thing right now because he's very capable of doing some tremendous, <laughs> tremendous things. But he's been on the sideline quite a bit in this fourth quarter. And that's how you want to keep him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you're Virginia Union, you want to keep him on the sideline. Now, if you look down there, there's nobody deep, really. Mario Jackson and uh, Mitchell are like standing all the way up at the 35 yard line and then they kick it away but it's going to go out of bounds and it's going to be a penalty. Yeah bad mistake by the kicker. And that's unfortunate. Here is Arrington Jones. This is throw it to the studio and Lowell. You're going to start off with a quote from Charles on Tuesday. Your head says what, and your heart says something. Well, well, Lowell, <laughs> Lowell knows he doesn't want me to say giggle. <laughs> giggle Maggie. <laughs> That's right. Virginia Union with one timeout remaining. Of course, Tuskegee took the ball rather than the uh, have him re-kick it. And Tuskegee has three, all three of their timeouts remaining. You know, Tuskegee looking for that black national championship. They're in first place in the latest Sheridan Black College Bowl, followed by Delaware State and the Jaguars of Southern. So congratulations to Pete Richardson for a big win over Grambling in the Bayou Classic right after Thanksgiving. In fact, he has a three-year contract extension, so all of those who were calling for his head at the beginning of the year <laughs> go yeah. sit down in the sidelines somewhere. And, and, and props <laughs> also to a guy like Henry Frazier down oh, there at Prairie great View. Job. I mean, you, great we, job we, down there at Prairie View. We did a game there a couple of years ago, and it was exciting then in the form of Bowie State coach as well. He was at Bowie State and yeah. now at a and at Prairie View and m And I want to say congratulations to Pete Adrian, coach of the year in the MEAC. A great job at Norfolk State this year. What about Al LeVan? Al LeVan did a great job at Delaware State. And great job on the defensive side yeah. of the ball by Virginia Union. Still with some time. They only have time, one time out remaining, and they just use it right now. That is Virginia Union. And Jerry we, Jones with a nice play there. And of course there was a coaching change in the MEAC this year. Florida and M still looking to replace Reuben Carter. They also let their athletic director Nelson Townsend go and we just found out on Thursday that uh, North Carolina A&T released uh, D. Todd as the athletic director. She supported Lee Fobbs. Of course he's 0-22. The team has lost 27 straight games. But he's only been there two years and he was supporting she was supporting Lee Fobbs as their head coach and it may have cost her her job. You know, I was really surprised by FAMU and Reuben Carter. Yeah. So now we've got a third down and nine facing the Tigers of Tuskegee. Of course, Virginia Union just called a timeout. What do you do if you're Tuskegee, do you well, pass the ball? Well, you go back in a pass situation and you've got a guy like Jakari Atkinson that can get some yards with his legs. The problem with this offense has been on, on the bench so long, they forgot how to play offense. Remember, it's a six-point ball game here. A touchdown and an extra point wins it for Virginia Union. Atkinson throws it, and it's caught. And it's a first down on the far sideline. Great move by English after the catch. Yeah, he makes Niles Rainey miss and gets that first down. Jason English, a big game in the Turkey Day Classic. They call him the Ninja. Because now you see him, now you don't. <laughs> he had three touchdowns against Alabama State. Two of them came on tip balls. He had two games in which he caught five passes each of those games, and that was once against Albany State and once against Alabama State. Well, he was a ninja there picking up that first down. He certainly was. First down and 10 now at the 48 yard line. 202 in the clock running and movement on the opposite offensive side and it was uh, Antoine Mitchell the red shirt freshman out of Decatur Georgia number 85 who moved prematurely I think they could have got a, a multitude of guys on that one <laughs> it looked like Brandon Smith was also over there jumping off sides oh actually no that was all it was it was false yeah, start. I, I thought Brandon Smith came off so fast, but that's that's the reason why. 
The 85 move, Antoine Mitchell. Here you see Jakari Anderson out of Valley, Alabama, team's leading rusher coming into the game. So a lot of time in the spring. And here he is taking off and running with it. And finally getting across midfield. He may have fumbled the ball. It's going to the house. Touchdown. Now it's Rainey. All they need is the point after. A fumble. And Niles Rainey picks it up. Takes it back 40 yards. Wow. <laughs> Jakari Atkinson with a good run, moving the ball down the field. I told you, Charlie, the minute they went into almost a slowdown mode, Tuskegee has not been able to get it back. Heads up play by Niles Rainey. And watch inside. He's running inside. Jakari Atkinson. And right there. The Can you believe loose. this? I mean, this was Hurley Hemphill, who was hurt earlier with his neck, right there comes up and strips the ball, and Niles Rainey takes it back for six. This is for the lead. It's all tied at 50. The point after is up. And it is good. 51 to 50 is the score. Remember, Tuskegee was leading 50 to 24 at the end of the third quarter. And now it's 51-50, Virginia Union, and the Tuskegee crowd cannot believe what they're seeing. This watch the pickup of the fumble. Watch Hurley Hemphill, 51, come in there and strip the ball. See, right there, the ball comes Ball's loose. out. And Niles Rainey, perfect place, perfect time. He's gone. You know, you taught the tackle the man and the ball, and that's a good job by Hurley Hemphill there. And there was a missed block in front of him by Anthony Driver that allows Hurley Hemfield to just come free on a free shot on the quarterback. And this comes with 143 left in the ball game. I guess when I said yesterday 64 58 ball yeah, game, yeah. <laughs> they thought I was kidding. This is in regulation. You've talked it into existence. <laughs> And don't forget, this has been a well of an ending for Virginia Union. They have scored four unanswered touchdowns. They were down 50 to 24, and they have scored, outscored them 27 to nothing to take the lead. Well, we talked about it the last two weeks. Tuskegee has not found ways to finish ball games. And we're seeing it again this week. Well, Alabama State came back on them with two touchdowns late in the regulation to send the game in overtime, and then they had to fight for their lives to get out of Montgomery on uh, Thanksgiving Day with a 64-58 three-overtime victory. I don't think you're going to see any overtime here. Here's the kick. He's going to come down to Mario Jackson at the 16-yard line. He can fly. Watch out. And Mario Jackson gives Tuskegee good field position right at the 43-yard line. Now, the timeout situation, very, very important. Tuskegee, I believe, has all three of their timeouts remaining. They do. Virginia Union has none. But Tuskegee needs to get the ball at least into field goal range for their field goal kicker, Matt Sims, who's done a pretty good job in field goals this year. He had a 47-yarder as his longest for the season so they have to get it at least down to around the 30 yard line 25 and we saw him kicking consistently yesterday from that 43 yards right and Atkinson flushed out of the pocket flag is down we're probably going to see holding and Atkinson still on his feet normally when the umpire throws the flag it's a holding penalty well, once again, you're not playing good as far as offense. They're really, everybody was covered down the field. Atkinson has to make something happen and to put your offensive lineman in a position where they get out of position and hold. And it is holding against Tuskegee. As you look at Willie Slater, five-time NCAA assistant coach of the year, Assistant at Troy, Western Alabama, Jacksonville State Temple. 
So that 10 yard penalty from the point of the infraction will move the ball back to the 33 yard line. Boy, this has been a ball game. Hasn't yeah, it? it has been. And like I said, it's been a, a game of streaks. 17 nothing was the lead by Virginia Union. Then they were down 36 17, giving up 36 unanswered points. Now they just scored 27 unanswered points. Screen pass on the near side to Fitzhugh. Fitzhugh is brought down by. And he gets back to his original line of, line of scrimmage. Yeah, and that's and about it. Hurley Hemfield finally making the stop, 51. And now a timeout's being called. They're going to use one of their two remaining timeouts. And again, uh, that national championship that they're looking for, we don't know if it's going to slip away from them, but with a perfect record, the perfect record is in jeopardy right now. Well, everything's in jeopardy after the way they played in this fourth quarter. The end of the third and the fourth quarter. Well, they were ahead at the end of the third quarter, 50 to 24. Then they scored two touchdowns within a that gave them that uh, lead, 50 to 24, in a 13 second span. But then in the fourth quarter, it's been all Virginia Union. 27 points. Little 18 yard pass to Miller. Little 22 yard pass to Taylor. Little 22 yard pass to Cunningham. Little has thrown six touchdown passes today and then the the icing on the cake so far don't light the candle yet but the icing on the cake was Rainey's 40 yard fumble recovery that he took in for the touchdown and, and the other thing is Virginia Union had bad plays but they always found a way to overcome them. you know penalties or, or just different I mean things fourth down them. situations yeah. I mean we had the fourth down and 22 or fourth and goal from the 22 and they convert and they score a touchdown here it is second and ten for Tuskegee going up top Point. Jason English he did it again Wow came in with 13 touchdowns on the year and he shows you why he has three guys back there with him DJ Spellman the one he takes advantage of and he ends up getting the touchdown 50 67 yards Wow unbelievable you know he, he plays it right there and has the like one guy but he goes up at the highest point the guy that goes the highest usually wins whether it's in basketball or football it becomes a jump ball at that point and they they trust Jason English the ninja to go and do his ninja thing <laughs> four touchdown passes today for Atkinson and now coach Willie Slater is calling a timeout I think he may want to go for two it would be wise at this point with the way that Virginia Union offense is played remember now 46 seconds is the time remaining Union has no timeouts remaining this is the second timeout used by Tuskegee University they lead it by seven one point will give them a six point advantage the two pointer will give them a seven point advantage and like you said I think that's what because if they come back Virginia Union and score on you then you tie ball game you go to overtime Boy, I tell you, what a game we've seen here today. 56-51 is the score. Union and score on you, then you tie ball game, you go to overtime. Boy, I tell you, what a game we've seen here today. 56-51 is the score. Since the 109 mark of the third quarter, they've gone almost 15 minutes without actually uh, English is just a junior out of Mobile Alabama with the Murphy High the ninja and he has given his team a five point lead here they're going to go for the two point conversion Atkinson's going to try to run it and he will not get there right now well, we've seen this field yesterday and walked on it and you got a chance to see it it can be awful slippery and Atkinson loses his footing right there so, so Virginia Union will be 